A dilapidated city with zombies walking around, the background is a night sky with lots of lightning. The confused guy lies with his arms spread out to the sides, which are chained, the girl asks what his name is. She is smiling and dressed in a sexy uniform, holding a whip, the girl wants to know why this guy entered their base. Song Chao gets angry and repeats, not for the first time, that he came here as a tourist. The girl asks if Song Chao will continue to be stubborn. There are many monsters around them, but he walked freely around the city with two buckets of precious tomatoes, Sun didn't seem to have good intentions. The girl spits out the tomato, she asks if it contains an anesthetic. The girl coughed a little, trying to get rid of it completely. Shin Jeme tells her sister not to worry, she will let her know when she's finished eating, Shin checked the tomatoes and they only contain a little bit of pesticide. Sister Shin Jiawen was in deep thought. Song Chao's boyfriend asks these two young ladies to let him go, he is not at all comfortable speaking in this position. But Shin Jiawen replies that he is just a naive boy and hits him on the arm with a whip. He himself fell into their hands in Sichen, and now he's just trying to laugh it off. She flirts with Song Chao, don't let him think that her little sister won't beat him just because he's so handsome, let him tell the truth quickly. Le Song Chao is perplexed by this whole situation, there are so many different questions at once. Shen Jiawen suddenly grabs him by the clothes and shouts where he got these tomatoes from and is there anything else? Song Chao's boyfriend admits that suddenly he found himself in a place close to the end of the world. It was risky, but Sun carefully avoided all the monsters in his path. Fortunately, he was very attentive and careful all this time, carefully carried buckets of tomatoes. Otherwise, he would not have been able to meet these sisters, as he would have been killed by these zombies. Song Chao currently looks rather shabby and looks tired. The girl hits him again with her long whip, he shouts, how unexpected. He's in pain, and Song Chao's eyes close together. He calls this sister a murderer, she demands that Sun continue to talk. Otherwise she'll kick his ass next, his sister still holds his clothes. Sun replies that he understands everything and asks him to stop, he already told everything, he will continue. He shouted loudly that he said so. Sun arrived from another base and is here on business, if Jowen helps him with them, then Chao will bring even more tomatoes later, she doesn't believe there is more. She wants to know what kind of help he needs from them, she asks if Song Chao is a slave trader. His sister asks him if there are any other products, was this tomato a little sour? Shen Jiawen sits directly on top of him and stares intently, she thinks what to do with him. Ah Shen Jiamei shouts that he wants to eat vegetables and also eggs. Jiawen reassures her, let her take care of herself, it's simply impossible to get eggs now. All chickens have mutated, so now their eggs cannot be eaten, the guy doesn't believe in this. Song Chao doesn't understand what's amazing about these ordinary foods. He thought that the sisters were just hungry, and they had a real shortage here, he concludes that this world has come to its end. Now his sister freed his hands, he tries to bargain and asks what he can get here if he brings a bucket of tomatoes again. Sun has sick parents who need care, and his sister needs money for school, since he got here through the ring, he needs to try to get rich. Shen Jiawen said she would take a look. She has six energy modules or ten laser pulse cannons. He may also be offered about four to six girls with good looks. Song Chao can't believe it, is it possible? And not even just one. He can exchange food for beautiful girls, it's like a fairy tale. His sister noticed his delight, it seemed to her that he wanted to engage in the slave trade. Sun replies that he needs something more valuable, such as jewelry, diamonds, gold. Sister Jiawen smirks. Within a moment, she asked why he needed this. Can't you see that everything around is empty? These things have long ceased to be of value. The sister asks who he really is. She tries to understand who he is and what he does. Song Chao thought very hard. He explains that their base is rich in products, they are in demand for values that make their girls happier. Chao offers to make a simple exchange, he will be able to deliver food to their base in exchange for silver, gold and jewelry. Shen Jiawen thinks, how many non-radioactive tomato-like tomatoes can he deliver for such an exchange? They have a lot of food, so he can come to them every day as long as the sisters have something that interests him. The sister warns that they do not provide special services. Song Chao guesses that the sisters could protect him, he says he needs their protection while he's here. The sisters are thinking about how best to act in this situation. Sister Jiawen agrees, she will handle it, but they need to decide on the price. 
a bucket of tomatoes will cost them 10 kilograms of gold, or other items of similar value, the sister warns that she cannot carry too many of these useless things at once. Sun agrees without any problem, Jiawen is now waiting for food from him, they are ready to begin cooperation. She starts eating one tomato, and what he brought now will be used as an advance payment. Jiawen admits that she hasn't eaten anything so clean in years, she's just delighted. After agreeing on their treaty, Song Chao and now intends to do something, he raised his hand. Sun immediately says goodbye to his sisters. But he is stopped, he can't just move around like that, there is no need to leave this place and get out of their sight. In this area, mutants have been destroyed, but still not completely. If he runs away and dies, then don't blame the sisters for not being able to take care of him. Song Chao then asks where can he go to the toilet here? At least he can do this. Shen Jiawen sends him away. And at this time they enjoy the real tomatoes delivered to them. The guy is glad that he is finally leaving this unfamiliar place. Now he needs to take his time and think everything over carefully, there must be a specific reason behind what happened. He guesses that there can only be one reason why it became possible for him to move into this world. And this is a brightly shining gold ring on his middle finger, he is truly unusual. If we take into account the most unusual of all, then all that remains is the ring that he recently purchased in the store. Song Chao tries to twirl this golden ring. It immediately begins to glow brightly, bright white rays appear above the gemstone. Suddenly Song Chao suddenly begins to be carried away somewhere. He is right in the center of the displacement funnel, with large bright sparks around him on a black background. Song Chao continues to twirl his ring on his right hand while in a dense vortex. He sees that he has reached a large green lawn on a hilly area, he returns to his house. The guy looks at his glowing unusual ring on his hand, this ring of heaven and earth can bring a great fortune, he can buy it for himself. A plump man with a long mustache and thick beard sells it to Song Chao for a great price, only 199 yuan. The man looks very carefully and reverently, Sun Chao doesn't understand who this old man is. Then this grandfather began to quickly run away with his big bag on his back, because the city guards were chasing him. Su was sad that he missed him, now we need to find this old man to find out something from him, suddenly a woman calls out from behind the guy. She stops him and demands that their family return the money to her as soon as possible. Chao was a little confused in this situation. Sung's son is furious, her son is going to go to university to take exams, which cost money. Chao kindly begs Aunt Zhang to give him a few more days and he will repay the entire debt. His father fell ill with pneumoconiosis, and his mother suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and they had no money for treatment, he borrowed a lot of money for this, now he can only hope for a successful deal with these two sisters. Jia Xiao's son promises to repay the entire debt within three days and give even good interest, and he doesn't believe it, she's been waiting for five years, his whole family is poor. In any case, let him save as much as he can and repay the debt as quickly as possible. Sung's son is furious, he punches the wall hard. If she says anything more bad about his family, he promises to kill her, how dare she. Song Jia Xiao shakes his fist against the wall, he says that he will return the money tomorrow, with additional interest. Now he asks to leave and not to bother him anymore, he said everything, he's had enough. Aunt Zhang is shocked, how dare he bully her. If tomorrow he fails to repay the debt, then he shouldn't blame her. Jia Xiao's son is determined to use the opportunity presented to him to ensure a proper life for his family. Not the next day, outside the market, Sun Sun prepared two full buckets of vegetables. Buckets and a large box are assembled right in front of him, that's good, now half the job is done. It's time to use your ring, he starts to spin it, the ring glows brightly again. A large time vortex appears directly above Song Chao and a loud sound is heard. Song Chao is happy, he was transported to the same place as last time, it worked out after all. But then the black barrel of a pistol is pressed to his forehead, everything happens so quickly. Thus he is welcomed again, the girl asks if Sun has been constipated all this time. They were interested in one question, where did he disappear to yesterday? He didn't say anything or say goodbye to them. But Song Chao says to calm down, he was just going to get food, didn't they want to eat vegetables and eggs? He just brought all this for them. One of the sisters immediately became very happy, and she could hardly believe her eyes, she immediately starts drooling. 
This turned out to be true, in front of them there really are two buckets of vegetables and a full box of eggs. The other sister stands and grins, she looks mysteriously, it's quite interesting. The sister's lips are pursed, emotions are boiling inside. She shouts at this guy to go and prepare the food he brought. Song Chao brings out a large cauldron with cooked food, and the sisters sit and eat everything with great pleasure. Sister Shen Jiawen wonders if he is hiding the food somewhere not far from them. The other sister can't help but be excited about such fresh produce. As far as she knows, within a 10-kilometer radius around the base in which they are located, there is nothing else except mutants and zombies. Sister Jiawen wants to know where he got all this from. He admits that when he goes out, he stocks up well, and she doesn't have to worry about the rest. Now after this meal the guy wants to talk about their deal and find out about the vault, but my sister says that it is far away, moreover, they cannot open it with their equipment. Song Chao is very disappointed. There is no storage facility nearby, but she promised him 10 kilograms of gold, she notices that Sun has a good memory. There really is no storage facility, but there is an area with villas, these rich people must have what he came for. Song Chao wants to move forward immediately then, but Jiawen doesn't want to rush since they just finished eating. Song Chao looks at his sister questioningly and expectantly, he needs to do this. She understands that there is a duty. She agrees and stretches her fingers, you can count this as a workout after eating, she tells Jiamei to stay and watch over everything. And he gives instructions not to leave anyone alive. The guy is surprised, aren't both sisters coming, how is she going to cope alone? But Jiawen says that he himself will be with her, that should be enough. She reassures and says that all the local mutant monsters have already been destroyed by them earlier. When they get there, he can take whatever he likes, this should suit him. Song Chao introduces himself, he talks about traveling from the present to the future, he himself is a little panicked by this. A few minutes ago, Sister Jiawen tells him to put on his soldier's watch and throws it to him. He looks, but doesn't understand what this thing is. He sees this for the first time in his life, what an interesting invention. And how should it be used correctly? My sister is surprised, is he still not aware? How can you exist here and not know at least about this? He admits that he himself is not a fighter at all, and has not even seen a single monster she mentioned. At that moment everything became clear. This is a multifunctional soldier's watch, they are on her right hand, Jiawen buttons his collar. They can not only determine its location, the watch looks very nice. They can also detect the intensity of surrounding radiation and warn of danger. The watch also keeps you in touch with your teammates, it's very useful and convenient. She activates her protective helmet, grabs it by the collar and pulls it behind her, we need to go faster. Jiawen says that he himself will find out everything along the way, they approach her all-terrain vehicle. Song Chao can't believe his eyes, he doesn't have wheels, the real transport of the future. She sits on him and asks, is he really from this world? He knows so much. How could this guy have never seen a maglev all-terrain vehicle? All this is suspicious. She looks back questioningly. Song Chao laughs and looks away, of course he is from this world, how could it be otherwise? For Jiaswen, all this looks very strange, you need to be more careful with this guy. The girl tells him to just sit quietly behind her and not say anything stupid. They take off sharply, the all-terrain vehicle takes off with sparks upward, Song Chao tries to hold on. Sun clung tightly to his sister so as not to fall at high speed on this all-terrain vehicle. Shen Jiawen is surprised by what is happening, what is this guy even doing? She turns around, she's not entirely comfortable riding with him like that, but Song Chao does not let her go, he closed his eyes and clenched his teeth, his first flight does not go entirely smoothly. Shen addresses him sternly, she warns him that if he dares to move his hands, his sister will shoot them, they are driving along a road in a hilly area. Chao's boyfriend is surprised at how quiet it is. He can't understand why this is so. His sister had already told him that they had cleaned up here several times. There are not only zombies, but also all kinds of mutant animals, after killing which things became much calmer. Suddenly they are attacked by a furious mutant rat with sharp fangs and red eyes. Song Chao shouts to be careful, he notices immediately, the rat really looks scary, it can be dangerous and it looks like it is poisonous. The girl takes out her gun, she suddenly raises her hand up and kills this attacking mutant rat above them. They continue to drive on, his sister tells him not to fuss too much, it's just a mouse. 
Sun is interested in such a gun and wants to know how much it could cost him. But Shen Jiawen replies that he is worthless if he really needs him. When he arrives at the Linjiang base, he can exchange it for one of his eggs. Song Chao is discouraged, he can exchange just one egg for such a blaster, in such a dangerous world, combat equipment must be brought to perfection. In front of them is a well-kept and rich villa with many expensive houses, trees, and a river. They have arrived, Song Chao stands next to his sister in front of the fountain, his mouth open in admiration. In front of them is a large modern brick house with several floors, trees grow nearby, everything is well equipped. The sister suddenly pulls out and shakes her black pistol, you need to be on your guard. She says to follow her, he can't act alone. She admits that they haven't been in this area for a while, therefore, caution will not be superfluous. This can be a little problematic, perhaps something else will happen to them this time. Song Chao is surprised, he clearly did not expect this. They are in a spacious room of a rich house, but its walls are stained with blood. He immediately liked the sofa next to it, it looks very expensive, you can just pick it up. Jiawen urges him on, she tells him that they need to return back to the base before dark. His sister takes him to look in the master bedroom, he follows behind and climbs the stairs. They look around, excitement filling each of them. This is a very large and rich bedroom, as a rule, valuables should be here. But Song Chao doesn't notice anything special, he wants to move on, just an ordinary spacious bedroom, what kind of jewels can we talk about here? The sister is wondering what she can do, looks like she has a good idea. She extends her leg, Song Chao is stunned. He can't believe what's in front of him. Jiawen broke the glass in the wall, and behind it there is a huge secret door, how could she have guessed this before? But the sister is not too surprised by this herself. She admits that she herself used to live in an even more luxurious house than this one, and such a decision is not unusual, she was too lazy to look. The sister fires her gun at the door lock. A huge armored round door opens, revealing a golden figurine of a ship behind it. Song Chao is delighted, which is what he really wanted at the moment. Among the boxes is an elegant golden figurine of a boat, now he will get rich. The ship is simply beautiful, Song Chao could not even imagine something like this for himself. The sister calmly tells him to take what he likes, and then they will go to the next house. Song Chao's eyes sparkle, he is holding a galleon in his hands, which is made of pure gold. Sun saw something else interesting. Nearby lies a beautiful ring. He concludes that since the ring is in this vault, it must be very valuable. He liked it and wanted to take it. Song Chao decides to take him too, now they can move on, the guy is happy. Suddenly he felt something was wrong and became wary, it seems something didn't go according to plan. Song Chao wants to know what's going on, his sister tells him to be quiet. Shen Jiawen stands alert outside the door and holds a gun in his hand, Sun needs to calm down now. Song Chao asks what's going on. The sister looks out the window onto the street, she is alert and inspects the local area during the day. Jiawen activates his multifunction soldier watch on his left hand, a blue screen appears. Jiawen recognizes someone. Song Chao wants to know what's going on, does she know anyone? What could happen to them in this place? Some bad people from the south suburbs, they once wanted to sell them and their sister as slaves, and came several times to the western suburbs. But now they are being attacked by a group of dangerous mutant wasps, they are trying to somehow cope with them. Really, how terrible for them, this bad weather interferes and spoils the plans of these guys. Song Chao also activates his soldier watch, he wants to see something in the interface. A screen appears above the clock, showing an image of a mutant wasp and information about it. While these guys are attacked by mutant wasps, it may be possible to attack them, but there is a caveat. No one in this group had seen them yet, Sister Jiawen suggests leaving through the window. She walks forward and calls for her, Jiawen steps on the window with his right foot. Song Chao watches as she quickly jumps down, the wind blows her long hair. But the window is very high, he doubts, how can he deal with this? But there is no choice, you need to take the leap. The guy lands but twists his ankle. He's in pain, Sun makes an unpleasant noise, Shen asks if he's okay after the jump. She notices something is wrong, was he never given fluid to strengthen his genes? The guy runs after her, Chao wants to know if he can somehow buy this wonderful liquid. Shen thinks that this can be done for 30 eggs. She tells him not to talk and to hurry up, they can't stay here for long, they need to run. There is an explosion. 
One of these dangerous killer guys notices them and asks them to stay and help them. The sister did not expect such a turn, how can she trust them after such a past? She gives the gun to her partner and asks him to cover her now. Son is confused, cover up. To him. How will he do this? He didn't expect to be involved in something like this. Time is running out, the situation is heating up, the sister asks her partner to act quickly, let him take the gun and help. Song Chao stands guard with a pistol. He doubts and admits that he has never even used a weapon, how can he then cover for her now? Shen Jiawen is surprised, another failure, what's wrong with this guy, what should I do next? It turns out that she was not entirely lucky with him then. Sister Shen Jiawen takes out two grenades in his hand, it seems she has come up with a way out. Sun was interested in one question, what is it? She has flash and smoke grenades, they are designed to repel insects. She applies them and says not to forget to reimburse the expenses later, they still got into trouble. The grenades worked, they blind this group of guys, one of them tries to cover himself with his hand and closes his eyes. Now the sister and boyfriend are trying to escape. One of the group of bad guys is now angry, he wants to stop them and shoots his weapon. The bullet flies straight towards the sister, this is a dangerous situation that has gone wrong. But the protective armor on the sister is activated, and the bullet hits her directly, there is a sound. The bullet still breaks through the protective shell with a bang, she overtakes her sister further. The bullet hits her arm and causes damage, now sister Shen Jiawen is injured. Song Chao is worried about what was happening around them. Wu Shen Jiawen is a wound, although not fatal, what should she do now? Now she won't be able to cope and fight with everything so deftly. You can see blood flowing from her, we need to do something urgently, we can't stay with this. Song Chao shoots back, he is worried about how his sister is feeling, she's fine, son shouldn't stop. They run together under fire, sister Shen Jiawen holds onto his injured left shoulder. Mutant wasps attack. Their opponent curses, raising his weapon up, this makes him uncomfortable. Mutant wasps fly directly above Sister Jiawen and Song Chao, they can overtake them too. The sister takes a blaster and fires upwards at them, they can't waste a minute and keep running. She tries to push herself off the ground. Jiawen says to act now. The sister jumps onto the all-terrain vehicle in the air, Song Chao tries to keep up with her with a bag on his back. Jiawen extends his left wounded hand down to him, he should have time to grab it. Partners hold on to each other. Opponents see them leaving. This is not good, the bandits need to catch up with them quickly. Sister and Song Chao fly high on the all-terrain vehicle, to Sister Shen the group below shouts after Jiawen. Shen even in this situation, Jiame tried to eat. Song Chao asks for forgiveness, he says he's never done anything like this before, next time he will try to do everything better and keep up. Jiame bandages his sister's wound. Jiawen says that he can forget about it for now, he must first train in shooting in order to achieve at least some effectiveness in battle. A special medical balloon is applied to her shoulder wound, he makes a short sound. And when the sister removes it, there is nothing else at the wound site. Song Chao can't believe it, a gunshot wound was cured with just an injection in such a short time. He thinks since the medicine here is so good, maybe it will help his parents. Song now decides to pay more attention to food preparation and food sharing options, he says goodbye abruptly and leaves. Jiawen reports that this group of southerners can come to them at any time, is he sure he wants to go right now? He has no choice, he really has to go back to solve one thing for himself. The sister does not willingly say goodbye to him, Song Chao promises the sisters to bring even more delicious treats next time. He turns around and walks away with the bag in his right hand, the guy needs to find a secluded place so that he won't be seen. Sun stands behind the wall and turns his ring, bright whirlwinds begin to appear but his sister is hiding not far from him. She realizes that he twirled something and then disappeared. Jiawen is upset, she swears at these southerners, because of them her armor is now broken. It is now unusable, but armor is the main attribute in their world. Something will need to be done about it later. Shen Jiame tells his sister over the earpiece that the guy was able to escape from them. Jiawen accepts and tells her sister to quickly come back to her. Jiawen sets aside his jacket for armor, she'll deal with it later. The older sister thinks about Song Chao and calls him a problem guy. She sits and wonders what she should do next in this current situation. Song Chao arrives at his home, he is happy and confident that now with the sale of this golden figurine he can improve the life of his family. 
Afternoon, a beautiful well-kept building in the city with several floors against the sky. A female worker is standing with a stern expression on her face, this worker looks angry and tired. Song Chao coughs in the establishment to get her to pay attention to him, he leans his hand on the display window. The worker says that he has been looking like this for more than an hour, why did he come to them? Chao reveals that he has a real piece of gold art that he brought to sell to them, do they accept gold? Their organization really accepts it, but they need invoices for further processing, they do not accept products of known origin. Song Chao is not discouraged and goes to sell his product to another store, he must succeed today. Now he is confused about where to go next, he needs to somehow sell his product. Later at 4 o'clock he runs out of another store where he is suspected of having stolen it. At 5 o'clock he is thrown out of the next store, just some series of bad luck. Then at 6 o'clock, Song Chao comes to the gold shop, which quickly dispenses cash, but the man offers him a price of only 100, Song won't even think about less than 300. It's already 2022, and he still hasn't been able to sell it anywhere, Song Chao sits on a bench outside, confused. He could never even imagine that if he had gold in his hands, he would not be able to sell it. Suddenly a man in well-groomed pants and shoes stands next to him. Song Chao realizes, yes, of course he is ready, although what else could he hope for after such a day? A man in a hat and glasses is thinking, he stands in front of Sun, his hands behind his back. The man invites them to go to his store, it inspires confidence, it's worth a try. A cozy courtyard against the backdrop of the night sky, there are well-groomed buildings with lights burning in their windows. The man invites him to go to his store, everything is neatly arranged there. A man taps his left hand on a wooden table and welcomes him into his antique store. A well-groomed gentleman introduces himself as the owner of this store, his name is Zhou Fuyuan. He gets straight to the point and invites him to get the goods that Song Chao wants to sell. He takes out his product and places it on the table. Song Chao shows off his untouched golden galleon, it is a true work of art, he is ready to sell it at the same price as regular gold, does he agree to buy it? Zhou Fuyuan is delighted. He takes out his magnifying glass and examines it carefully, checking for authenticity. He concludes that the galleon is indeed very elegantly made, it is a good thing. Song Chao is waiting for what this owner will say. Their store makes money based on honesty and fairness, they never cheat their customers, if you buy or sell from them, there will be a market price, the galleon weighs more than one and a half kilograms. He invites them to become friends and calls them his little brother. He receives a notification on his phone, Song Chao is discouraged, if he has more things to sell, he can bring them here. The guy realizes that he has become rich, 740,000 yuan was transferred to Song Chao's bank account, finally. The right hand knocks on the door several times. The hostess opens the curtain and looks out, she asks who it is. The man tells her to open the door. Aunt Chang looks at him suspiciously. This is Song Chao, he came here to finally pay off his debt, he wants to know the bank account where he can transfer the money. The hostess invites him to come into the house, let him translate it to his son, since she herself does not understand this. She calls Zhang Jun so that he would go out and collect the debt, he's right there. Zhang Jun is very surprised, after so many years this guy finally came to pay. Song Chao gets straight to the point and says he will do it via mobile money transfer. Zhang Jun shows him the digital code on his phone. He gets angry and says son doesn't go to school, he should have found a job and paid off much earlier, no wonder, for him spending money on his family is a waste. Song Chao thought very hard. He will pay 12,000 yuan instead of 10,000 to pay the extra interest, after all, a person should be grateful, if there is no basic education, why is he not an animal? But if he says anything about his family, Song Chao is not going to tolerate it for long. They are both disheartened and cannot believe that this former debtor of theirs would tell them such a thing. How dare he even dare Zhang? Intimidate Jun. Who is he here? Song Chao repeats after him. What does he want to check? Zhang's son is simply dumbfounded. He came to them and dares to behave like that, where is the respect? Song Chao repaid the debt, now he plans to change his parents' bed, clean the house and hire another nurse. He lies in bed and plans, maybe he should even buy a new house. The guy also doesn't know what happened to the two sisters, perhaps he should visit them again. Spacious room, a bright white light comes out through the door in the left wall. A man is walking and stomping on the floor. This is a happy and confident Song Chao, 
he managed to do what was necessary. He slams the door hard and shouts that he is back, he is ready for new opportunities and adventures. He is friendly, but the blaster barrel is immediately pointed at his forehead again, why? The sisters ask again if it is him. Song Chao affably raised his hands up and says that the commander should not shoot at him, it's him. Angry and wary, Sister Jowen asks why is he here again. Song Chao doesn't quite understand what's going on, did those bastards really come after them? But they rudely answer him that it is none of his business, that he left them himself, what is he doing here now? The guy admits to them that he has a younger sister whom he needed to meet, if they had not seen each other, she could have gone in search of him. Jiawen is surprised, sister. Why shouldn't he take her with him? The fact is that it would not be entirely comfortable with her, and that's why he comes to them only alone. My sister asks is it because of the mutation? Sun confirms, she just doesn't trust anyone but him, and she's very aggressive. The sisters understood everything, the tension between them continued. The friendly Song Chao shows his backpack, in which he brought them bacon and sausage. Would they like to have a taste now? The guy seems to have found a win-win approach to these two beauties. Plates, chopsticks and food are placed next to each other, there is bread in a bun. Shen Jiamei is very pleased and breathes a sigh of relief, she finally tasted plenty of fresh food. She is resting after having a hearty meal, my sister says that she hasn't eaten such delicious meat for a very long time. She says why not her sister Shen Jiawen won't marry him. And then they won't have to worry about food anymore. She immediately punches her sister Jiamei on the head, who screams playfully. She threatens her not to dare to sell her sister and not even think about it anymore. Song Chao smiles mysteriously. He looks closely, the situation is really tense. The sister says that they will soon run out of energy module, so tomorrow they are leaving for the Linjiang base, they will also buy a new combat uniform. They invite Sun Wu to come with them if he wants. The guy eagerly immediately agrees to go with them, this should be interesting. He also wants to buy himself a strengthening solution, combat uniform and weapons, this is exactly what he lacks. The sister looks and wonders if ten copies would be too heavy for them to carry. The sister explains that these solutions in Linjiang have almost the same effect, so injecting them several times is useless. Song Chao says that he has some friends who need to strengthen their body, so he wants to take it for them too, what time do you need to go tomorrow? The sister makes an appointment for 10 o'clock in the morning, but he needs to prepare more food, otherwise there will not be enough. Song Chao agrees, they don't have to worry and can definitely rely on him, he will do whatever is necessary. A dilapidated city in the world of the end of the world the next day, cars are parked on empty roads. Two large identical bags of food are thrown loudly onto the floor, they are completely filled. Satisfied, Song Chao says that should be enough, Jiawen looks at all these bags with interest. Sister Shen Jiawen can't believe her eyes, she is simply delighted, her mouth open wide. The bags contain a lot of vegetables and fruits, there are also eggs and potatoes. Sister Shen Jiamei also sees bacon and meat, she is also delighted. He will leave them two bags as payment for the work, and the rest will be used in exchange for whatever he needs, the sisters are simply in shock. Song Chao is happy and looking forward to starting. Shen Jiame asks again if her sister Shen is still single Jiawen. Jiawen doesn't want to talk about this nonsense, it's better for her to go sit down. A yellow all-terrain vehicle with a loud sound flies through the air against a cloudy sky, there are vortexes underneath. All three set off on it to the base along the road, they quickly travel along a given route. Song Chao looks surprised. The base has high and strong impenetrable walls around it, light can be seen in some places. And the passage is closed with strong iron gates, this is a truly modern base. Song shouts to Jiamei if there is a military base behind the wall ahead of them. Shen Jiamei confirms this. The impenetrable walls have three roads that are scattered across minefields, mutants usually do not approach residential settlements or military fortresses, they have arrived at the Linjiang military base. A large line of different people stands in front of the entrance to the base, each of them has their own business. Well-equipped guards stand and keep order, they encourage you to watch the line, go through and show your pass. One person tries to pass by putting his hand on the electronic lock, these are the rules. Song Chao asks what is the exchange rate here? Sister Jiawen replies that one electronic currency is equivalent to half an egg. A hand is placed on the lock, on which is a soldier's watch, the pass is read on them and a sound signal is heard. 
The local guards smile and ask if the sisters really decided to get themselves a boyfriend, but Sister Shen Jiawen abruptly orders him to shut up and continue guarding. They smile and nod. The main gate to the Linjiang base opens, welcome, they are very massive and strong. Song Chao is truly delighted. This is some kind of cyberpunk, everything is very well thought out and arranged, a real city from the future. One of the people has special digital glasses on his eyes, he is standing near the local eatery. There is also a woman who appears to be next to a slave who has a special device on her neck, they are standing outside a local bar. They are walking in a crowd of people, at the entrance they hand over their weapons, Song Chao wants to know if everything will be okay with them. Shen Jiawen reassures him, she says that all residential areas and business areas are absolutely safe. But the guy still has some doubts, looking at what is happening, despite the fact that everything around him is modern and thoughtful. He sees poor people just sitting on the street, is everything really safe here? One man looks desperately, looks like he is hungry. One man opened his mouth wide and shouts to come and look, he has something interesting with him today. He brings with him a beautiful girl who is from the southern region, her hands are tied. He sells it for only ten electronic coins, the slave girl looks depressed and sad. Song Chao swallows, he calculates that it would only cost him five eggs. His sister notices his interest. She advises him to be less nosy here, there are a crowd of other people around and a lot of other things. Song Chao refuses, raising his hands, he can't afford to waste food on such things, he says to go sell food. Shen Jiawen is glad he understood, even though they are also people, they can do anything for food. They might even kill him in the middle of the night and take all his belongings, there is no need to be distracted where it is not necessary. After some time they were there. In front of them is an exchange office. His sister instructs him not to talk about anything or anyone and just pretend to be indifferent. This way no one will look down on him, the main thing is that he brought the food, they will do the rest themselves. Workers in modern protective equipment look at them, what did they come with this time? One man recognizes the older sister and asks if she has any good products to sell. She takes out a full bag and puts it on the table. This worker in modern glasses can't believe what she brought them. Elder sister Jowen smiles, looks straight and says that she is selling all this. The surprised employee asks if all these products in the bag need to be exchanged. The other man can't believe his eyes, there was so much he hadn't seen. Vegetables, and fresh ones too, how did it happen, this is very rare at a time like this. There is even fresh pork, which weighs at least 3 kilograms, there are eggs and other vegetables nearby. Several other visitors are shocked, they also can't believe it, it's really rare for them. The employee wants to know where she is from. He calls out loudly if everything is okay here. But another worker advises him better not to ask them, otherwise they may not come again. He agrees to prepare everything immediately and politely asks them to wait for him. The sister tells him to hurry up. And so that there are no tricks, she watches him. Sister Shin Jiamei is simply overjoyed, they were able to earn as much as 470 coins. Now they can afford to buy a bunch of different things at this Linjiang base. All three are happy, they are going to go shopping, a good end to their joint venture. A man in a hood and mask stands behind a wall, he was very well helped this time and they can choose whatever they want, it looks awkward. The person says that he can trust and count on them in the future, the hooded man overheard everything and thought it was a good find, he decides to share this with his brother Tiger. Brother who is informed at the establishment about one very good catch, they tell him how someone was able to get over 400 coins. A man with a cigar in his mouth becomes interested, that's a lot, he listens with interest. The informer continues to say that they had various vegetables, fruits, and even pork, who is surprised, is he sure about the pork? The informer confirms that he is 100% sure of this, you can't miss this. Brother who understands that this is indeed rare, then this is worth paying attention to. He sits next to two girls whom he hugs, the man wants to know how many there are in total. He is informed that there are only three of them, one man and two women, they are still shopping at the market. This strong and pumped up man takes a cigar from his mouth and addresses Lao Lu, who gives him orders to order their people to stay on their way to the western outskirts. In such times, whoever has pork can become a real rich man, you can't stay away from this. Brother who chuckles, he says that this will be his lucky ticket, a great opportunity. Sister Shen Jiawen asks Song Chao if he is sure he wants to shop at the market now. Sun says that not only he, but they also have something to acquire since they are in this place. 
Jiawen agrees and suggests they split up for better progress. A gun magazine with the latest model of a modern gun shown in the center. Song Chao is simply shocked by this, this is the first time he has seen such a well thought out weapon. The guy's soldier's watch begins to broadcast a screen with a greeting. It is an automated help interface for providing advice and trade routing services. Linjiang based trading market, he can interact with the interface at his own discretion. There is a huge modern armored robot with big guns instead of arms, he has several sites visible. Song Chao is simply delighted with the local inventions and technology, he would never have imagined anything like this for himself. This market has just everything, it's amazing, there are both small equipment and huge equipment. Song Chao just stands there with his mouth open, Sister Jiawen sees him and urges him on, he just stood there and doesn't move, they need to do some shopping too. Song Chao is indignant, how can these sisters sometimes cause inconvenience? They left him in the market all alone, Song Chao is unhappy, as the one who hired them, he wants to give them a bad review. Song Chao admires the large assortment of different weapons on the market. He sees a new expensive model of a modern automatic pistol, it is as effective as possible, this is the latest development. The guy doesn't even know what to say to this. The world here is quite chaotic, so people need to have weapons to ensure their survival, Song Chao decides to arm himself as well. He cannot continue to hide behind a woman's back every time some new danger arises. Linjiang Bay Street, night, signs and some windows in buildings here are on fire. Song Chao stands delighted, wearing modern, good protection. He really did it, the guy was able to buy himself real armor and weapons. His sister notices him, she asks if he had time to shop. Do you need anything else? Song Chao is happy to see them again. The sisters appreciate his new equipment, he seems to know how to make good choices. He actually has some pretty good equipment with him, the sisters also bought something for themselves. Jiawen encourages him and says that he seems to understand how important life is, she also reports that they have now run out of money. Song Chao can't believe it, didn't she say it was a huge amount of money? They really had a lot of money, so they were able to buy a lot of things, sister Shin Jiame thanks her super brother, she is delighted with the candied pumpkin and will remember his great mercy. Song Chao is a little annoyed, he doesn't want his sisters to remember him just because of food, his sister reassures him so that he does not worry about all the little things, they're teasing. Brother Hu and his guys are waiting for them in combat readiness, they are serious. Road at night, it passes through uninhabited terrain, there are bushes. Shen sister's yellow big all-terrain vehicle is on the way, quickly rushing through the air with a loud sound. Brother whose mercenary Lao Lu looks carefully through binoculars, he waits and acts according to plan. He and other fighters are in combat readiness, they are all heavily equipped and dangerous. Lao Lu addresses his boss. He reports that the prey is here, the powerful boss smokes his cigar and stands behind, he is watching everything. Brother who is happy, the case is worth the candle, and they are well suited for him this night. The team of guys is given the order to get to work, they all have machine guns and are ready to shoot. The main thing is to remember that they do not kill the people themselves, but only stop the all-terrain vehicle. Brother who orders to open fire. Strong pumped up hunters in masks obey their boss, one of them has a huge cannon. They open fire and there is a huge loud explosion, the all-terrain vehicle is destroyed. The explosion brightly illuminates the entire night sky. The all-terrain vehicle falls to the ground in front of them, it is completely destroyed, brother who curses, it shouldn't have happened like this. Didn't he say not to kill them? How can he get their money now? He curses at his mercenaries, are they working for him for free, why did they allow this to happen? The team inspects the all-terrain vehicle and finds only its wreckage, what does it mean? Suddenly, Brother who sees a shell flying rapidly and loudly towards them. It hits its target and detonates everything around it, this is a huge explosion that causes great damage to everything around. The shell hit whose team directly, they all die, how could this happen? From a distance it looks like a huge bomb explosion that leaves nothing alive behind. The projectile was fired from a new weapon, from the outside I can't believe that this is possible. Sister Shinjame happily calls them all trash, because they all do. She was the one who took that shot, let them go straight to hell, Song Chao also sees all this. Brother who sees all this, he swears, this should not have happened, their plan was badly disrupted. What was that, how could this have just happened? He flies back himself so as not to die. It looks like some kind of bombing, 
it's good that he didn't get involved himself. Brother who guessed that this was actually an anti-ambush, there was no one in this car, they deliberately set everything up this way, distracted them, and then attacked with artillery from a distance. This means that the second wave of shelling will be carried out again soon, we need to hurry. Who quickly calls Lao Lu? He orders him to quickly take several people with him and engage in artillery. The remaining team goes on the offensive, they follow the pumped up and strong man. They are quickly approaching in the direction of the anti-ambush, at this rate, they will quickly overtake them. Song Chao sees this and is excited. Song informs Jiame that these bandits are coming straight towards them, what will they do now? Sister Shin Jiame is a little confused, what can she do now? These guys were able to quickly adjust. She looks at her weapon, but the reloading has not yet finished, which means she needs something else. This infuriates my sister, since she is not very good in close and medium combat, what should she do now? Jiame quickly catches on. She remembers Jowen telling her that there is nothing that firepower cannot solve. She launches rockets into the air. And if there is something that is beyond our strength, then we just need even more firepower. Shin Jiame stands in full combat readiness, Song Chao watches everything that happens. Brother whose team stomps loudly on the ground, it is advancing, they now need to recoup their losses. They push each other, they need to do everything even faster, the whole team has a serious attitude. One of the mercenaries gives instructions to deal with the shooter on the hill as quickly as possible, soon they will attack again. A mercenary in a fully armored suit hears something, he stopped. A powerful combat charge hits him directly, the mercenary dies, like the others before him. How can this be, the mercenary did not have time to do anything, he simply flies far back. The rest of the team turns around to see their colleague hit by a shell. The mercenary girl shouts that they urgently need to find shelter, this is a new attack. There are more and more shells, they are now hitting them directly. One of the mercenaries swears, they again fell into a powerful ambush, they urgently need to dodge. What the hell attacked them? Shin Jiame stands tall on a hill, she does all this with the help of her hovering cannon. The hovering cannon begins to spin loudly and quickly in the sky, she's flawless. The mercenary doesn't believe it, such an item cannot be sold to private individuals, this is unacceptable to them. Jiame is in full readiness, she smiles, the sisters know how to get what they need. The bandit shouts at them and demands to stop. Bright big lights are burning in the sky, the guns are approaching and the mercenaries are in their sights now. The hover cannon begins to operate at full power, she makes a loud sound. The firepower hits the bandit's team, they are all confused. Sister Shinjame sees the result, she is delighted, her little sister Jiawei was really right. Linjiang base, same night, there are several nightlife establishments in the area. A man lights his pipe in the city, it looks like he has some business or conversation brewing. He lights a cigarette and exhales with relief. Another man in gear asks him why he stayed here. The informer responds. He sold information about the double flower to brother who, but didn't he go to inquire about some leaks? He sits, smokes a pipe and laughs, does he know where this brother who came from? He seems to have come from the southern suburbs, where the slave trade was widespread. Yes, the guys from this place love to kidnap and trade slaves, this informer never returns to find out information about the object, it's just reckless. This way you can easily die and lose all your materials, therefore, it is necessary to take this seriously. Brother who is simply furious, what is the reason for all this? just one shooter on that hill. After all, there are so many real fighters among them. He could not have imagined this. Jowen appears above the mercenaries, it turns out that their double flower is not decorative at all, like the peony. Boss who turns around angrily, what is this new attack on the other side? He is angry and notices his sister, Jowen is joyful, she was in ambush for half a day, but now it's finally time to play, this is the Lord Flower. Sister Jowen skillfully fires several shots from her new blaster. It hits the mercenaries straight and kills them immediately, they try to shoot back, but to no avail. Jowen herself comes under fire from other bandits, but deftly dodges, she fired five successful shots. Already the sixth. She's simply elusive, it seems that no one can compare with Jowen. The mercenaries are trying to do something, otherwise, if they remain like this, they will simply die. Jowen has already killed eight of Boss Hu's mercenaries, nothing can stop her. They fall dead to the ground. Hu's team tries to somehow get into the jumping Jowen, but to no avail. 
who gives instructions to shoot where she lands, we need to kill her quickly. But the huntress Shin Jiawen notices everything happening around him, she's not that easy to catch. She activates the double jump, sister has many elusive tricks up her sleeve. She pushes off and jumps even higher. The mercenaries look at this in confusion, what can they do against her? How is this possible? Has she stepped on air now? Jiawen is high in the air with her blaster in hand, her right thigh injured by a bullet. Opposite her is a well-armored mercenary. It was he who managed to hit his sister, with some success, they should be able to fight it off. Friend from Sister Shin's hand a sharp blade suddenly appears to Jiawen, what is she going to do next? My sister does everything quickly and accurately. The sister hits the mercenary with her blade directly in the head, he does not have time to defend himself. Sister counts the ninth soldier killed, brother whose team's losses are only increasing. The mercenaries are confused by all this, Jiawen is a true professional. They had a good warm-up. Brother Hu is disappointed, my sister says she hasn't even thanked them for all this yet. The sisters had just picked up their new equipment, which has not yet had time to serve them. And these mercenaries let the double flower test it properly, this is what happened. They did a really good job, Jiawen has blood on her face and is determined to see this matter through to the end. What happened 30 minutes ago? The sisters, along with Song Chao, learn that someone has ambushed them. They come to the conclusion that it is only natural that, by purchasing so many things at the base at one time, they themselves become a target for someone. Jiawen orders his sister to attack from a distance, and she herself will attack as usual. Regarding their young master, he can go with Jiamei, now they cannot count on his effectiveness, Song Chao can't believe it, he's a young master. Jiamen has a plan, they will use their vehicle as a decoy to concentrate their fire and be able to catch the enemy by surprise. Song Chao is at a loss, why don't they just take a different road, why do they need to commit these murders? My sister is angry, what is he even talking about? She points her finger at him and says that they are all here according to his soul, they intend to take his things, sell his flesh and blood, sell him into slavery, take his life. Song Chao must understand this. And he still doubts whether it is necessary to kill all these scum. Does murder seem like the right choice? The blade in Sister Shen's hand Jiawen. She uses it to cut through her opponents. She is a true professional warrior. Jiawen fires his blaster accurately. The fire hits the mercenaries directly, one of them swears at her armor, her sister's is really good. Jiawen makes a sudden movement and breaks with his foot. Shen Jiawen deftly dodges the multiple gunfire surrounding her. She quickly hides behind the nearest cover, loud and strong explosions are heard behind her. The sister reloads her blaster. There's a whole bombardment going on behind her, maybe she's too confident in herself. The fully armored bandit yells at her to get out. This mercenary takes out his huge cannon and fires a strong shot in her direction. He screams for this sister to go to hell. Sister Shin Jiawen is very worried. A huge explosion from this bandit's projectile is heard in the distance, everything around is on fire. The sister is still hiding. This gets her into trouble. Jiawen activates his energy shield. She sits down right behind him, the fire hits him. The sister manages to survive with the help of this shield. A group of mercenaries stands and looks in her direction. One of them rejoices, this time it will come to an end, no one can be saved from this. There is a huge explosion and fire all around, like after a bomb. A loud sound reverberates throughout the area. They were happy because the job was done. The armored mercenary notices that the smoke is too strong, they need to go check the situation closer. Suddenly a shell streaks through the mercenaries. They scream loudly and he hits them straight. It was a shot from the latest Jamin blaster. Sister Jamin calls out to them loudly, so that they do not forget about her under any circumstances. Jiawen praises her Jiamen, she showed up just in time again, she managed to cover for her sister. The mercenaries are hit by blaster fire. Shin coming again Jiawen. The mercenaries scream as shots hit them, their situation is not going as they originally planned. The automatic blaster aims directly at sister Jiawen, her face visible on the interface. This is brother Hu, he is beside himself with anger. Hu furiously shouts for her to just die, a strong and loud shot is heard. Several special bullets are fired. They fly straight towards Jiawen. They fly up to the sister, whose strong armor goes off right in front of her face. The bullets hit, the sister flies far back. Jiamei shouts to his sister, she is watching everything from the side. Song Chao also can't believe it. Brother Hu is satisfied, has it finally worked out. There is laughter. 
Shun Jiawen is jumping again, she deftly placed her hand on the ground, the sister is fully equipped with modern armor, she attacks this team of mercenaries again and fires shots. Brother who can't believe it, how can this be? He can't believe his eyes, the boss is furious, but he's really confused. Now he himself is under fire, who screams loudly. Tiger Brothers mercenaries cover him and put him on the ground in time to dodge the shots. This is a modern, super efficient blaster. Sister Jiawen is now even closer to them, smiling and aiming straight at their team. The sister begins to talk through her teeth, which one of them will be afraid now? Is this man's name Tiger? She wants to know, is he the culprit of this attack? She asks if he thinks he can just come and easily ambush her. Brother Tiger looks on in horror, the sister tells him not to be shy, let him come out. A super effective blaster in the sister's hand, what's the matter? She's ready for action. Let him come out, didn't he want to play? Did he want to rob them? Why is he hiding in the corner now? So he won't be able to achieve anything. Brother Tiger gives the order for them to leave, the remaining team is perplexed, this must be done, because these are not some well-fed sheep. This is a real wolf in sheep's clothing, their entire team quickly runs away to hide in the forest. Sister Jowen carefully examines everything that happened after the fight, there is a real big fire all around. The bodies of the mercenaries are on fire. The corpses lie on the ground. The interface reports that zero enemies have been detected within a kilometer radius, there is no tactical scheme. Shen Jowen asks if he really ran away. At that moment they decided to call their sister. Happy Jiame and Song Chao run up to her. Jiawen notices his sister Jiame and greets her happily. A senior sound is heard sharply close to them. Sister Jiawen falls, Jiame gets scared and tries to catch her. Song Chao doesn't understand what's going on. These assholes used armor-piercing bullets, now Jiawen is lying wounded, something needs to be done urgently. Jiawen's armor is pierced through, fortunately, the rest of the mercenaries got scared and ran away. Song Chao is very tense and concentrated. Jiawen suggests that they all return to Linjiang. She says to be taken to DR Su. They are in the doctor's office, she says to get that bullet out, they have to find it. There are various equipment and devices around, the current situation is rare, but sometimes in life a horse stumbles. This is the first time the doctor has heard of Jiawen being injured due to an incorrect calculation of the strength of the defense. The senior doctor at the Linjiang Base Private Hospital, Su Jing, almost laughed at all of this. Sister Shen Jiawen tells her to shut up. Jiawen did not expect that some guy from Nanjiao had a shell that could penetrate second-tier armor. Su Jing believes that it was some smuggler who sold her the armor at a premium, she had no luck with that. The senior doctor says she heard that Jiawen received a lot of money from someone. It's amazing that my sister doesn't even deny it, where does she get such honesty today? In the end, everyone saw it, and there is no point in denying it, Jiawen wants to know about her two companions, what they do. She doesn't have to worry about her sister, Jiame is waiting for her outside the operating room, she is worried. As for the rich guy, he seems more interested in the upgrade cabin. And it looks like there was no physical reinforcement, and he sees the reinforcing cabin for the first time. Everyone was interested in the question, who is this guy? Where did he come from and who might know him? The doctor doesn't want to hear any more gossip, when Jiawen changed her equipment, did she include adding a rechargeable battery or shield module? Sister Shen Jiawen comes to her senses, she really didn't think about it. The anesthesia still hasn't worked. Jiawen says the anesthesia takes time to recover. A grand show will soon take place on stage, if she doesn't come out on time, then don't let her talk about any melons, she can't even take the bench. Jiawen chuckles, whatever that means. The senior doctor wonders why the nurse hopes that she will be able to run immediately after removing the bullet. She will be able to do this, but the patient will need to lie down for at least two hours afterward to regain strength and nutrition. Su is a classmate, Shen Jiawen. My sister lies there and tries to somehow refuse. Dr. Su Jing performs surgery to remove the bullet, during which she asks if Jiawen wants the melon. The patient screams loudly. Lin Jiang base was under the cover of darkness. Empty spacious place with tables and chairs. The wounded brother tiger enters the room. He is led and assisted by the remaining surviving mercenaries. The girl covers him and tells the other mercenary to quickly run and call someone for help. And let him not forget to take a box of medicine with him. The girl is trying to calm down the tiger's brother, let him be patient, soon they will bring medicine. 
Brother Tiger shouts and calls them idiots. Didn't they notice that something was wrong in the first place? The mercenary notices how the people who previously remained to guard the house have now left. What's really going on in the house now? Uninvited guests arrived at the Tiger's brother's establishment. He sees a blaster right in front of him. This is some kind of mercenary in good new equipment. The sudden appearance of these people confused the girl and the Tiger's brother. They were taken by surprise. The girl is immediately pressed head down to the floor, a loud bang is heard, she can't do anything. The mercenary calls out to the Tiger's brother, but he tells her to shut up. What does this all mean? Brother Tiger, with a wounded hand, doesn't understand, he does not have time to understand the situation. Someone comes in and stomps in the house. This man is a snake, with his pipe in his hand, near him stand mercenaries in excellent armor. Serpent, in the house, equipped mercenaries stand around the Tiger brother, they came to find out something. Brother Tiger replies that they are all on his territory, what could this mean? The snake looks at him carefully, he confidently tells his brother Tiger not to worry. He can explain all this right away. After all, it also happens that a whole thousand words can be expressed in just one sentence. He decided to attack Xin Jiao and got into big trouble after that too. The tiger team does not understand what is happening. The tiger mercenary shouts at the snake, is he mocking them all? He gave them this information himself, didn't he? He blames the snake, does he have any idea how many people they lost in this mess? But the snake mercenary shoots him in the head, Blood scatters to the sides in the tiger's house. Brother Tiger and the mercenary can't believe their eyes. The snake apologizes to the tiger, but his boss says that this mercenary is interfering without permission, so he helps discipline this little brother. The tiger says that he is from the southern district, and if the snake dares to touch him, the lone wolf will not leave him alone. The snake makes a puzzled expression on its face, that lone wolf. The news that he participated in the attack on the sisters is now on everyone's lips, the other three bosses want an explanation from the southern region. Brother Tiger says to continue, he still doesn't understand. Lone Wolf was covered in cement. However, there are those who believe that the fee is still not high enough for this, so they said to eliminate it. The mercenary turns to her brother Tiger and reminds him of herself, she is now also in a difficult situation. It is pointed out to him that all that is left on his side now is ebony. Why not send Buddha to heaven and help his younger brother? The snake asks him to give them all his money and land documents now. Bubbles that make sounds and structural compounds similar to DNA float in the liquid. Song Chao's gaze is riveted on this liquid, he examines with interest what is happening in it. He stands directly in front of a glass cylindrical structure in an advanced modern hospital. The doctor notices Song Chao from behind and addresses him, she sees that he seems interested in the enhancement fluid. Dr. Su stands in front of him, Shen is okay Jowen. The doctor replies that it is just a minor operation and her sister is already at her side. Song Chao is glad that everything worked out. The doctor addresses the guy, she wonders if he would like to try genetic enhancement. Song Chao asks how much it will cost. The doctor replies that it's 800 and installments are also possible, Song Chao notes that it is quite expensive. Su is slightly indignant, it seems that this little brother doesn't quite understand, after all, this drug is rightfully one of the most important things in life. It was thanks to this drug that people at this time were able to survive the threat of mutated creatures. After it, people can tolerate high levels of radiation, and even eat mutated food. It also helps to significantly improve a person's skills and body strengths. He must understand that the purpose of the drug is not only to strengthen the body itself. The drug is the basis of survival and the dignity of life. And now he still thinks it's expensive. It helps to break out of slavery and be truly free. Song Chao stands inside the enhancement booth with his eyes closed. Under the influence of the drug, Diar, Su is congratulated. This time she was able to successfully sell the product with a profit of 500%. Su doesn't know this guy but it's clear that he wasn't familiar with the genetic drug before, the basis of the business is selling good things at a good price. Shen is still resting Jowen. The time is on and the countdown is already underway. Shen Jowen simply left her a message and left, Diar, Su assumed this. Jowen apologizes in the message that she left, but she needs to hurry, so she will pay next time. Diar, Su is not entirely happy with this, now she is thinking about how to teach this sister a lesson. Night Base Lin Jiang, the buildings are burning brightly, the snake says that they are all simple people. 
He is happy and says he is lucky today. The boss watches his behavior carefully. He asks him if everything will be okay now, after what happened. The snake doesn't quite understand. Is it possible to let the tiger live now? The snake grins easily. This guy's entire team was simply killed, and the people who helped him are now also gone. He was left completely alone in this terrifying place. Moreover, this time they are simply dismissing the pavilion ruler, if they haven't done it before, can't they help with the finishing touches now? Snake says that the intrigues between the big guys have nothing to do with them, they were just hired to be ahead. Someone heard him from behind and says that the big guy who hired him told him and gave her a report. They brought a bunch of people and set up an ambush. They robbed the ruler, took people and captured the house. As an honest scout, doesn't he want to tell her something? Sister Shen is standing in front of him Jowen. The snake cannot believe this and curses. Snake says that he heard Sister Shen getting shot, this is true, thanks to the snake she almost died. The snake makes excuses, how could this happen? Didn't he warn her before the fight? But Jowen complains that he didn't mention their armor-piercing bullets. They both stand opposite each other and laugh loudly. The snake suddenly became serious, he asks what Sister Shen wants now Jowen. Jowen says he can relax, his eyes are not at all sincere in front of her, she just wants to settle scores with him and discuss business. The snake does not understand what matters the sister is talking about, does she intend to cooperate with their intelligence group? He asks his boss if they are free for business. The boss confirms. The snake knows that Shen Jiawen always welcomed purchasing valuable information from them, the sister immediately punches him in the nose and tells him to listen. This is certainly a good job opportunity, the snake complains about his nose, it has become all red. Jiawen tries to negotiate, couldn't what happened be a reason for good business? The snake does not quite understand what she is leading to. Sister Shen means hunting, just like this time, he will spread information and deceive the bad guys. Everything worked out great for the snake and his brother Tiger, he could not suspect the nets that had been laid out. Jiawen admits that it would be better to control the quantity, she will take people to kill them, and then the serpent and his team will search their houses. They will take things and all equipment from the enemy's battlefield for themselves, and then sell them to them at a reduced price, and the property they captured will be divided into four or six parts. Just don't let him say that this doesn't interest him, the guys, including Van, will definitely want to intervene. The employee behind him speaks up, he wants to remind you that they are just a reconnaissance group. Jiawen continues, if they can't do it themselves, then let them go to their bosses and think it over with them. Jiawen adds that if similar mistakes are repeated like today in the future, then their team will deduct from the share, she shakes the card. The employee notices that it appears to be a gold credit card that Tiger's brother's money was transferred to, the snake can't believe it. When did this happen? Snake agrees, she can keep it, let it be her gift, in this case, Sister Jiawen agrees to forgive him. She tells Snake to continue to be a good boy, my sister will be looking forward to working with him, the snake and the employee are silent in response. He simply waves back at her. The employee doesn't understand why the serpent doesn't stop her. They begin to realize that they are not alone in this quiet courtyard, mercenaries are watching them on the rooftops. The snake tells his employee that he is still too young, these guys were not to be taken lightly, just as he had warned. He didn't wonder why she even dared to come here to them and blackmail them. The employee is confused. He sneezes, the employee is at gunpoint. Sister Shinjame curses. She sits on the roof and says, has she really caught a cold? Warm and wet, this process is similar to diving into the depths of the sea, there are a lot of bubbles around. But in the end it seems like the sun is shining, this is Song Chao, who is swimming and gaining strength. Song Chao woke up, he observes that it was actually just a bright ceiling. The guy gradually comes to his senses, he lies in bed. He gets up and looks around, Song Chao is in the medical office. Sun feels a change in himself, he recalls going through an enhancement procedure, is everything ready now? He observes the state of his body and feels that he has become truly stronger than before. How amazing it is when such changes occur. He looks under the blanket in the groin area. Suddenly Sister Shen appears Jiawen with a tray. She comes up behind him and asks what is he doing now. Song Chao was all excited. She says that in this case she will leave him alone, just let him remember to wash himself before going out, Song Chao shouts to his sister to wait. 
Su Jing is happy as she monitors her patient's condition after the procedure, this is the first time she has noticed a patient waking up worried about that part of the body, regarding the postoperative reaction, there is little of it. Song Chao begs him to stop, he covered his eyes with his hands. The doctor concludes that there are no such enhancing drugs in his native place, this is unfortunate, so she will explain it a little. As she already said, this remedy is used mainly for the development of physical condition, but this is only the foundation, there is still a long way to go. Firstly, increasing physical abilities is achieved with the help of general strengthening drugs, this includes improving vision, smell, taste, thinking ability, reaction speed, etc. Then comes higher level amplification, the body will be released from the shackles of genetic blockage and will be able to enter the realm of the superman, it will become firm and unshakable, and the brain's abilities will also increase exponentially. People who have undergone high-level body enhancement can even fight mutants personally. And finally, the reinforcement itself. He doesn't have to worry though, he doesn't need to know about all this, in this small place, he would not be able to see beyond his abilities anyway, Song Chao becomes interested. But the doctor warns Song Chao that if he is unlucky enough to encounter such a superman, he should just run for his life. The guy concludes how dangerous they can be. There was silence, the Shin sisters stand behind them, looking at the enhanced Song Chao and listening to his conversation with the doctor. Diar, Su Jing is all ears. Shin Jiawen, meanwhile, drinks one of the strengthening drugs in the bottle. She says that in fact, no one in Linjiang has ever seen this supernatural force. Su Jing slyly agrees with this. Song Chao is deep in thought. He would like to know all the prices of these different drugs right now, he wants to buy a lot of them, and the higher the quality, the better. Jiawen laughs, she mentioned that the price of a regular one is only a few dozen, Su immediately tells her to shut up. Let him eat his nutrient solution in silence. The doctor abruptly moves her away from them to the side, the sister admits that the medicines here are actually quite expensive. Su Jing regrets that Linjiang is just a small place with no high-level and powerful drugs on the market. But if high-quality potions are needed, she can sell 200 bottles, Song Chao approves, the sisters on the sidelines can't stand it. The doctor is pleased that what happened between her and Song Chao cannot be revealed. Sun asks if it is possible to use all these potions directly at once. The doctor is surprised, how can he think like that? The strengthening drug must first be adjusted to the patient's health. The guy understands everything immediately, he continues to insist, are there any drugs that are immediately ready for use? The doctor notices this character, he simply does not give up. Sue smiles contentedly, how about ordering a batch of simple equipment for him, but without a guarantee of its effectiveness, but everything will be fine, but the guy should know that all this is very expensive. Song Chao is overjoyed, he asks you to do this for him. The doctor agrees if the guy really needs it that much, but the price is 500, and there will be no other price, Sun agrees, pleased. Sun continues to ask, he wants to know how much the drugs of the highest level and superpowers will cost. Jiawen covered her face with her hand, why does he think there are no such quality drugs in this place? This is all because of their sky-high prices. But Song Chao's interest does not wane, the sister reluctantly names the starting price of such a drug, 10,000, there is also a strength drug that no one has seen, she heard the price is 100,000. They tell him just not to think about it, since they can't afford it, Song Chao repeats this out loud, 100,000. At this time in the spacious corridor of the hospital, the doctor asks the sisters what they are going to do next. Jiawen replies that they will spend the night here first, Su Jing reminds her sister to pay for the treatment. Jiawen laughs it off and says that they know each other so well, they can do without it, the doctor replies that she should not even dream of such a thing. Jiawen asks sister Su, isn't she going to bed too? The doctor coldly replies that she is a literate person who has no power, it's not like they're freelancers who will pay her for food, no overtime. Sister Shin Jiawen comes to his senses and stretches his arms. Song Chao remains in deep thought. Jiawen asks the guy what is happening to him, is he still thinking about the strengthening drug? He denies everything. Jiawen agrees to such difficult conditions. Sister Sen Shin Jiame go together with Su Jing, she obeys, the doctor replies that he can do as he wants. Sun doesn't understand what's wrong. Jiawen just wants to give him a little advice. Does he really want to have high-level potions? Sure, 
but there's not even a place to buy them here, Jowen calls him a fool, if there is no store, then they can open their own, Song Chao doesn't quite understand what's going on around him, as long as there is a large enough area, enough people and enough weapons available, he can buy himself whatever he wants, she claps in front of him so that he quickly comes to his senses, in addition, the more power he has, the more confident he will feel in business and his endeavors, Song Chao nods and agrees, this is all really correct, but the guy simply doesn't know what organization he could join here for further advancement, Sister Shen Jiawen clears his throat, Song Chao is all attention and very tense, he should notice that he has money and she has power, how about we try to do this all together, she suggests they work together. Jiawen shows that he got it right, so she wants Song Chao to invest money and become her investor. Will she help him expand his connections and buy all the materials he needs? Jiawen wants to offer him, he simply does not know what wild food is, and is not aware of everything that happens in these lands. If he does not serve some good court, he simply will not be able to move freely, Lin Jiang has a total of four leaders, and they command the four largest forces in the city, however, after what happened yesterday, the covering of the southern city should cool down. He himself could see yesterday how the robbers attacking them ended up without support, several dozen mercenaries simply disappeared. He had never dealt with people like this, and if he does not have sufficient strength to protect himself, yesterday's events will still be repeated, Jiawen understands this clearly, and she can give him a guarantee that she will do everything. Song Chao agrees, of course, there's definitely a point to her words. Shen Jiawen is delighted, but the guy begins to wonder why she didn't create her own organization before she met him. My sister is a little taken aback. He remembers how they took the money from selling food, ran to buy snacks, and ate them all the way, didn't they? Sun gets it right, he also assumes they have old equipment since all the money goes back to food. Jiawen is really ashamed now, how do they talk about food and how do they feel about it? And the first time they ate everything at once, without even leaving anything. Jiawen is going crazy with shame because this is the truth, Song Chao sets a condition for their cooperation, he will not bring food just to eat. Now Jiawen's identity has been revealed, this is a broke foodie, she laughs at this. Despite this, my sister still hopes. Song Chao also gives his consent. They will do this together, and he himself will support his sister in creating a team. He also insists that his sister keep her promise and give what Song Chao wants, if he realizes that they are not able to provide him with adequate income, then he will find someone else for his investment. Jiawen looks at him carefully. She gives him her smile. The sister extends her hand to him to seal their agreement. They shake hands and wish successful cooperation. Now Jiawen wants to tell Song Chao about their current situation. They will have to deal with these forces later. Lin Jiang is divided into five regions, and each region has its own leaders and major forces in four regions, east, south, middle and north. The eastern part of the city is a transportation hub between Lin Jiang and the outside world, dominated by a major black market and a group of information traders, the leader is Xingzi, he prefers to solve matters with money and talk rather than force. The central part of the city is a center of science, technology and heavy industry, its leader is a military man with the rank of general, who is oriented towards military leadership accordingly. There are a lot of people in the southern part of the city, there are slave traders and gangs there, those who tried to rob them yesterday had just arrived from there, their leader is Lone Wolf, he is a brave and ruthless guy. Jiawen continues, there is also the northern part of the city. Song Chao listens carefully. Is there something wrong with the north of the city now? The north is mostly home to gangs of thugs and mercenaries, and there are also a few people trading information. The leader of the north is Yang Wang, he is a little crazy, so it's better just not to go there. Song Chao calls all this some kind of devilry, Shen Jiawen chuckles. Isn't anyone in charge of the western part of the city here? Why isn't anyone answering? Sister Shen Jiawen replies that the place is under her personal control. Song Chao is stunned, he claps his hands, but everyone else has armies, and they only have two people. The sister replies that there are reasons for this. She starts coughing violently. In fact, this area has great development potential. It is rich in various resources, and many different relics remain from the ancient dynasty, from time to time you can unearth something really worthwhile. But what are the disadvantages then? There are too many monsters in the area, and because the development difficulty is too high, 
no one comes, that's why they are poor, Song Chao now understands. But still, I wonder why other people haven't captured this territory yet. Shen Jiawen responds matter-of-factly that, as she already said, because this is her territory. The next day in a modern hospital, the group of Song Chao and the two sisters are standing right in front of Dr. Su Jing. She looks at them dumbfounded, how is it that there is no money? The guy agrees quite well, it's really true. Shen Jiame asks if they are working with Super Brother now. Is he very weak? The sister smiles and whispers for Jiame to be quiet for a bit now. The doctor begins to be indignant, Song Chao doesn't want to tell her that he has already stopped planning to purchase this first aid kit, which she prepared all night. The guy explains everything by saying that the money that was earned from selling food was again spent on food before they came here, the sisters tensed. Su Jing turns to Jiawen, she believes that everything depends on her on their team. Shen Jiawen responds to their request. If she is ready to become a guarantor, then the doctor will write everything down to their account, but in this case she will have to pay an additional 20%. The sister replies that the price of the materials themselves will be enough, the doctor is angry, they will get what they pay for, Su threatens to pour out all the medicine and not let them take it. Jiawen makes a decision, she agrees with the doctor. Su Jing throws the first aid kit into Song Chao's hand, he thanks and promises to return the money as soon as he can. Now they are about to leave. Shen Jiame says goodbye to Sister Su. The doctor tells them to roll, and she herself will finally go to sleep. Song Chao didn't think that the doctor would actually do such a thing and lend them medicine. The doctor is not so inhumane, and besides, old friends get discounts. And something else. Sister Shen Jiawen is really ready to join the team. The doctor has had enough of this whole stagnant situation that the city of Linjiang is currently in. What's wrong with taking part in something new and fun? But Dr. Su Jing believes that he may regret this idea in the future. One of the districts of Linjiang city on a sunny day. Sister Jiawen stands in the alley and asks about the gold. Song Chao explains that he cannot simply receive supplies for free, he must exchange them for other things. But why does Song Chao's base need so much gold? The guy replies that not only gold, but also art objects, as well as antiques and other things. Jiame can't understand, why do they need all these useless things? Such needs from another base are simply puzzling, Song Chao laughs it off, he talks about completeness of thinking and knowledge of etiquette. But the three of them won't be able to take much gold even if they find it. Sun Chao gets the idea to try and buy gold from someone in the western region. My sister is perplexed. Should I exchange gold for food? Because of this, everyone will just laugh at her. Jiawen comes up with one option that could suit them. She takes him with her to one place. Happy hard-working man greeting their team, what a rare visitor he received today. Have they finally decided to get into their business? Jiawen tells him to stop talking nonsense and better listen to them, the man agrees. Meanwhile, Song Chao asks Jiamei what this amazing place is. Shen Jiamei sighs sadly. At this time, people are standing behind them. The place they were in was a slave market. Song Chao is shocked that he saw this place with his own eyes. Jiawen wants to get twelve people for herself, eight men and four women, she only needs fighters and skilled people. And for it it is necessary to assemble equipment, all these people are in slavery. Armored vehicles are driving through the area among a lot of vegetation. Their team was able to buy a bunch of slaves today. Shen's team Jiawen as a reserve and workforce. Thus was their carefully planned plan conceived. Song Chao feels sad next to him, he notices that all these people have been silent since they got into the car. They are driving inside the vehicle, there is complete silence. Song Chao is shocked how quiet it is. Jiawen explains that their life and death are uncertain and the future is unpredictable, therefore, it is quite natural that a slave may not be in the mood to talk about something. Song Chao remembers that Jiawen hates slaves, this is true, and has been for a very long time. She hates them in every way. The huntress repeats again, she hates them, she doesn't like dealing with slaves. There is still complete silence, this looks somewhat suspicious from the outside. Song Chao watches the sisters from behind. They continue driving for quite some time. Next, they will go to a residential area to find what Song Chao needs, then let him go back and change things and they will free these people. Song Chao is surprised, buy and then free slaves. You can't even tell from her that her sister could do such a thing. Jiawen smirks, is he hinting at something now? Jiawen knows what he's doing. They arrive at their destination. 
An armored vehicle stands on the site in front of the building. In front of them is a large abandoned house. After Song Chao left, they searched all the nearby villas and brought back everything that could easily be found here. Song Chao will take his shipment of gold and they will take the rest. They open the doors and get out of the vehicle. Jiawen opens the door of another large vehicle that was carrying slaves. She shouts for them all to come out. The slaves are sitting next to each other, they look back at her. The surprised slaves leave the armored transport one by one. Jiawen encourages them to go out and get ready for work. The sister orders the men to go towards the truck and pull the boxes out of it, and Jiame will have to take the women and remove unnecessary things with them, and let them leave nothing behind. Shen Jiame immediately accepts their instructions. Jiawen gives instructions to Song Chao, later he can choose everything he needs, just don't let him get involved with the others. Jiawen claps his hands and says to get to work, good work will be rewarded. One older man tells another guy that the sisters have finally started using slaves too. One of the slaves asks Jiawen about the reward. Some say they treat them simply as labor or cannon fodder, and as long as they wear these bomb collars, they will be what their sisters want them to be. Jiawen hears everything and immediately responds, is he trying to say that his sister is talking nonsense? The slave realizes whether this was really true. How will they react if their sister promises them their release as a reward? The slaves cannot believe what they just heard, are you sure this isn't some kind of joke? There really is no catch to this, Jiawen promises to give them not only freedom, but also provide them with work. She smiles welcomingly, did these slaves ever think there was a free lunch in this world? The man asks her what she intends to do. Jiawen replies that he doesn't need to know that. Jiawen extends her hand in front of the slaves and offers to try to see for themselves whether what she said is true. In front of them lie several boxes containing large bars of pure gold. Song Chao is delighted, the sister says everything that could be easily found nearby is already here, he thanks. There's a fortune here, almost 23 kilograms of gold, and there are also precious stones and jade jewelry. Jiawen will prepare a bag of about 6 kilograms of gold bars especially for him, Song Chao is happy, he can get a lot this time. Sun was very excited and began to get very nervous. By the way, is there anything the sisters would like to eat? Sister Jiamei talks enthusiastically about beef, milk, eggs and sweets, and Jiawen would like mushrooms and vegetables, even better if he could bring rice or noodles. Song Chao smiles, let them eat, of course, he will organize all this. He will remember everything, and this time he will probably have to stay longer, Jiawen promises to deal with the team for now. The hand pulls the handle, Sun Chao can't believe it, he was able to lift this box with extraordinary ease. Technologies of the future are making themselves felt, with such success, you can make money by delivering food. Song Chao leaves his sisters and says goodbye to them. Jiamei asks, won't they follow him now? Jiawen replies, they can forget about that, since Song is now their partner, they should respect each other's privacy, she calls to go reward the slaves who are waiting for them. Jiamei can't believe it. Sister Jiawen says there is no need to doubt, the employer has no doubt. The slaves see the sisters heading towards them, will they really be released? How can you believe this? Jiawen looks from above to see everyone standing together. She tells the slaves to listen to her. She shows them her interface, which displays their sales contract and also has a procedure for removing the collars from the slaves' necks, the sister can indeed fulfill her promise. But before that there is something. Sister Shen S. Jiawen has a suggestion that she would like to share with the slaves. Later in the same abandoned villa, the slaves do not believe in what is being proposed, create from them. Sister Jiawen comes down the stairs and confirms. She's sure many of them have heard about their sister's reputation. The slaves whisper, the double flower is famous, they survive without relying on a team, the sisters have a pretty good reputation, there are rumors that they don't like slaves, don't they believe in the righteousness of the lone wolf? Jiawen continues to say that for certain reasons, she needs to form an army to expand her business, although they are slaves, they are all talented people. They even though they are not fighters, they have their own special skills in their respective fields. Sister Shen looks thoughtfully. So, she ransomed them all in order to make a deal with them for their freedom. They laugh and say that they understand everything, one of them says that if he doesn't agree, then the collar will stay with him. What is the difference for them then? The slaves look at each other. Jiawen hears everything, how's that? She laughs and replies that there is a limit to how arrogantly you can look at people. 
she recalls that her attitude toward slaves is well known in Linjiang. Despite this, she once again reminded me of a very important thing. She's not going to break her promise, Jaya's when clicks on the interface, which has a picture of a lock on it. The collar on one of the slaves immediately unfastens. The slave can't believe it. Jiame is watching all this, did her sister really do this? All slaves are truly freed. The huntress offers to spend the night here at the villa today and think about her offer, if they're not interested, they can just leave tomorrow. The sister will eagerly await their answer. Slaves communicate with each other, what should they do now? Do they have any special choice? One of them says that he does not want to follow this sister. Others are up to something, they don't want to leave here empty-handed. Bedroom, Shen Jiawen lies in bed and sleeps, you can hear her snoring. Jiawen lies on her side, she can't hear anything. Slaves sneak up to the bedroom, they scout the situation and make sure that Sister Jiawen is indeed fast asleep. They consider her a naive fool, how could she even think of such a thing? By a dozen slaves unfamiliar to her and immediately remove their collars. This is not a paired flower, but just a small white one that doesn't really understand anything. The slaves intend to continue to stun to begin with. They will have to interrogate her, where does she keep her weapons and supplies? And when they finish something else they will then do. They all laugh together. A group of slaves sneaks into the bedroom. But some of the other slaves think differently. What are they going to do? The attacking slaves say they dare not go against their brother Eugene, they are simply grateful to their boss for giving them the freedom and want to return the favor with a few life lessons. Brother Yu asks, will they bite the hand that feeds them? They laugh and make jokes, these slaves are just paying for a service, that's all, the way it is. For Eugene this all looks suspicious. He says that no matter what they intend to do, they shouldn't force other people who don't want to be with them to do it. One of the slaves smiles slyly and agrees with him, you could just take care of others in the meantime and not disturb them themselves. In any case, once they get their hands on weapons, they can do whatever they want. The slaves tiptoe into the bedroom. Sister Jiaween is lying right in front of them, fast asleep, we need to act now. Another Jame sister has her back against the wall and is also dozing, and a slave with a bat sneaks up behind her. A group of slaves swing a bat at the sleeping Shin Jiawen shouts that this is their world. The slave swings a large stick, he tries to hit the sleeping Jiawen hard to catch her off guard. Behind, other slaves stand and watch, they are waiting impatiently. But something is wrong, the slave has some doubtful feeling. He hits, but the stick goes through Jiawen's body, how is this possible? What kind of disaster is happening here? In fact, this is not the real sister Shin Jiawen, her holographic projection. The slave shouts to his group of attackers that they need to do something quickly, but he doesn't have time to finish, an instant shot overtakes him. The slave wanted to leave in time, but now he was covered in blood, he himself was ambushed. It was a blaster shot. The slave falls dead on the floor, the rest move aside, the upstairs sister tells them that they are too stupid to kill someone and rob them. Jiawen sits on guard, she has them all in her sights, maybe she's really asleep. The group of slaves suddenly comes to their senses, they intend to finish the matter with the sleeping sister Jiame. In the hands of one of them is a black strong stick, he is very angry. The slave swings at Jiame, but she smiles and sharply opens her eyes, Shin Jiame was just pretending, she tells them, couldn't they act more decisively? One of the slaves waits, everything somehow takes too long, he taps his fingers. The slave is nervous, why did this take so long? The other one laughs at all this. Looks like these guys aren't that good when it comes to fighting. The slave looking after him yells at him not to dare look down on them like that. But he immediately falls to the floor with a loud sound. Jiawen herself comes to them, she concludes that there are two dozen slaves, and a dozen of them are villains, they are brave, but not smart enough. But for them there is nothing to worry about. Two sisters stand ready, at least there are a few people left who can be of use to Jiawen. Jiame throws small bright objects on the floor in front of them that ring loudly. The slaves see this with horror, they can't believe their eyes. These are command signs. Looks like it's really over for those bad guys. Sister Jiawen confirms this. Now she turns to the remaining gentlemen, and snaps her fingers to get their attention. A superpowered blaster is aimed right at them. Jiawen says now it's their time for rewards and punishments. The remaining culprits are now trying to quickly escape from the sisters in horror. They scream and don't understand why everything happened this way. The sister happily urges them on, she shouts after them, let them run away, girls. 
she tells them to run and meanwhile reloads her blaster, if they can't escape faster, then these slaves will lie face down on the floor, Jiawen is all sparkling with joy. Meanwhile, behind Shen Jiawen is behind the wall, another traitor slave sneaks up with a stick. He abruptly comes out and shouts towards his sister, he managed to take her by surprise. He screams at her to die and hits her with his stick. But why didn't it work out for him? His stick bounced off Jiawen, let him speak now. The sister turns to him, they seem to have completely forgotten what protective equipment is. She shoots right at this slave's head. The sister breathes a sigh of relief. She doesn't understand what all these guys are thinking. She did not give them any weapons or armor, and they wanted to kill her, there must be a limit to stupidity. Jiawen carefully and warily, maybe this is too much. Jiawen doesn't understand what he's talking to her about. If she had not been able to foresee this whole situation, then now she herself would be lying on the floor, and not these evil guys, now they have nothing to complain about here. After all, people are responsible for their decisions, isn't that right, you? If they collaborate in the future, he must understand her style. The slaves run away in panic, the sister says to repay grievances directly, and repay virtue with good. Outside the villa it is night time, one of the slaves lies dead on the ground. Shots are fired, one of the slaves is hit directly in the head. The rest are trying to hide and somehow stay alive. Sister Jiawen aims her blaster at the slaves and fires at them. One slave runs away in horror. Sister Shin Jiawen doesn't stop attacking, she stands in full combat readiness. There are gloomy dilapidated houses around, it seems that some kind of danger lurks in them. Drops of blood flow down onto the road. The escaped slaves stop for a break. It looks like they managed to escape and escape. But what should they do next, where should they go? Suddenly, ferocious, evil monsters jump out of the darkness and capture one of the men, he's trying to say something. Another girl sees all this horror happening. The man asks the girl to help him quickly. He loudly shouts to her to save him, to help him, this man does not want to die, but he himself cannot do anything against them. The girl is surprised, a crowd of mutants, how is this even possible? Suddenly she feels something ominous approaching her. Behind the girl is a huge pot-bellied monster who smiles widely, the slave is confused. Now the slave herself screams loudly. The monster opens its huge mouth with large and sharp fangs. The girl stands in horror. Blood spatters and a loud crunching sound is heard. Several slaves in the building look at that place, they scream, something happened there. Something terrible just happened. They see a huge monster called the Devourer, and around him there are many other smaller evil mutants, everything is just teeming with monsters and mutants. The huge Devourer has a horn on its head and a yellow light in its eyes. The slave stands next to Jiawen and sees everything, he is surprised how many of them have gathered. Experienced sister Shin Jiawen watches everything that happens with interest, this is not the first time she has seen this. The devourer and the mutants next to him now turn around and go in the other direction. The slaves are looking, has he really left? But don't rush to conclusions. The remaining slaves decide what to do. If they decide to leave, they will have to go through this whole huge pile of monsters. But how can they do this? The slaves look at each other. They will never dare to do this. But Huntress Jowen simply snorts lightly. They don't have to worry about it, the mutants in the western region were able to reach some understanding with the residents, there will be no danger if you leave during the day. Is this really true? It turns out that these mutated creatures are hiding behind nearby buildings, while devouring the traitors and mutants she expelled. Is this just a coincidence? Shen Jiawen continues to laugh, she is interested in the question if nothing works out. Is he implying that she has the power to control all these terrible monsters? Everyone understood perfectly well that there was a limit to dreams. One of the slaves says with displeasure that she treats others like monkeys. Sister Shin stops, she seems to remember something. She will look forward to their support in the future. Welcome to Jiawen Group. An area with lots of green vegetation, daytime, good day. A tightly equipped human leg. He runs quickly along the ground. This is Song Chao, taking a break, the guy is carrying a large box. Finally, he returned to his home. By the way, Song Chao appeared in his backyard wearing such an eye-catching outfit, this could get him into trouble. He needs to figure out some way to hide it, to begin with, he will simply change his clothes. Song Chao now has a new medicine in stock. 
it might even be able to heal his father's lungs. When S father Xiao doubts whether all this can really be done without problems, Song Chao says this is the newest drug from the company he works for, the drug has previously been tested on animals, he asked the company for a few of these pieces for himself, and then he would send them the data. If there are no questions, then their family will be able to make money from this later. Song Wen Xiao's son Chao will be asked, does he treat the elderly like a laboratory mouse? There is no way Song Chao can do this, this thing is very expensive, otherwise they won't be able to get it. A guy injects a modern drug into his father's arm. He hopes this can cure him, the father shakes his hand, he calls out to his son. Song Chao turns around, what's the matter? His father does not intend to interfere in his affairs, but he wants Song Chao to remember to act according to his conscience. Song Chao grins amiably, don't let the old man worry about it, he wants to get back to his job. A prosperous, well-groomed area of the city, an open box lies on a table in an antique store. The owner Zhou Fuyuan finds out that these are real gold bars. Song Chao says that there are only six of these ingots here, let him appreciate them, please. Mr. Zhou picks up one such ingot in his hand to take a good look at it. He studies it carefully, what is this? Zhou asks his younger brother if he did anything with these ingots. Song Chao doesn't understand what the question is. He didn't do anything, he just took them and that's it. Zhou notices that these bars do not have any serial numbers, but it seems that Song Chao is not deceiving him. Zhou closes the box and agrees to take it, but this time, he is only willing to give him 250 yuan per gram. The younger brother asks why so little. The fact is that these bars will not be easy to sell, and Mr. Zhou will have to use several of his channels to do this. Song Chao is in thought, Mr. Zhou tells him to just look at it as help with his expenses. A payment arrives on his phone, Song Chao didn't think that the bars would be difficult to sell. He looks at the amount dejectedly, but in any case it is pure profit, next time he will try not to take the bullion. Song Chao suddenly comes to his senses and remembers. Does Mr. Zhou know that there is a good car dealership nearby? The owner asks again. There are not many places to sell cars in this small town, but he can recommend one place. His car was bought there. He can go and see for himself. Mr. Zhou is trying to make some inquiries. He asks if there have been any robberies recently. They answer him. What is he even thinking about? This is all really strange. The owner of the antique store is confused. There is no record of a crime and the source of the gold is unknown, there isn't even a serial number, are they homemade? However, looking at the marks on these ingots and the degree of oxidation on the surface, it is clear that they were produced a long time ago, Brother Song gave him a headache. This is a dubious deal, don't do this next time. Song Chao says hello at a luxury car dealership. He says he came here to buy a car. The hospitable girl invites him to follow her, she will introduce Song Chao to the assortment. Her name is Chen Jia, and she is the sales manager at this car dealership, let Mr. Song feel free to ask her his questions. Song Chao is simply delighted with the cars in stock, they are all beautiful and modern. Song Chao admires literally every car. This is the largest store in the area, to suit the surrounding conditions, their main models are SUVs, they are equipped with the best cushioning and performance. What budget does Mr. Song expect? Sun thinks for a moment, he wants to start with 1 million. Chin Jia can't believe her ears. Sun asks if everything is okay. The manager says not to worry. She clears her throat. Does he have a favorite model? Sun wants to look and choose. Suddenly someone calls Sun Chao's phone. Song Chao apologizes for having to interrupt. His name is Brother Song Chao. He agrees, but who is calling him? Xiu Xiu's friends, Zhao Yu and Zhong Xilan, even though Xiu Xiu didn't want them to worry, they still decided it was appropriate to inform him. Song Chao asks what is this about? He heard everything and thanked me. Mr. Song hangs up. Song Chao turns to the manager again, she is all attention, ready to answer any of his questions. He quickly looks around at the standing cars in the showroom. The customer asks if they have a fueled car that they can pick up right now. Within a moment the car starts and drives away. Song Chao quickly drives a white SUV along a city road. The car rears up and makes a loud sound throughout the area. The SUV continues to rush through the city at high speed, sparks are visible from behind. The driver is nervously steering the car, he is swearing. The guy calls Xiu Jia a fool. When Song spoke on the phone at the car dealership, 
he asked Zhao to tell him exactly what happened. The fact is that Xu Xu just recently began to be pursued by a rich guy from college, but because of his bad reputation, the girl did not answer him. Then this person invited her to cheer up at karaoke and cheer on her friends, Xiu Xiu agreed because the pay was good, she also asked her friends not to tell her family about it. After this, the friends felt something was wrong, Song Chao began to growl slightly as he spoke. Zhao know where they went. The car stops at a modern tall building. Song Chao opens the door and quickly jumps out. If Zhao remembers correctly, they went to the heaven and earth karaoke room. Song Chao is standing right in front of him. He goes inside and is greeted by the girl manager at the reception desk. She recognizes this gentleman, the manager is stunned. He goes further straight to one of the rooms, the manager yells at him to stop. They can't just burst in and rush inside wherever they want. Song Chao looks around sharply and carefully. He finds a door, and decides that his sister must be behind it. He throws open the door and loudly shouts Song Wenxiu. He is just inside, what does he need? He holds Xiu Xia's hand, Xiu Xiu recognizes her elder and calls him, Xiu Xiu is puzzled. She shouts to her older brother. Sun Chao's hand is shaking, he turns to Sun Wenxiu, who will ask him, and he will simply answer. Song Chao is burning up and beside himself with rage, he wants to know what is going on here. They are inside a luxurious and spacious apartment. Wenxiu's friends nearby, Song Wenxiu scolds him and he also becomes furious, who is he anyway to burst in here so brazenly? Xiu Xiu is completely confused, she asks what her brother Song Chao is doing here. Song Wenxiu snaps his fingers, so their brother-in-law came here to visit them. Song Chao is determined and looks at everything. Then let this brother-in-law just stand and watch as he and his friends teach his sister. Song Chao is thinking about all this, so he is his brother-in-law here. The sister immediately screams loudly for her brother to quickly run and call the police. One of Song Wenxiu's friends swings at Xiu Xiu's elder brother and wants to hit him, he tells him to just be obedient and stay still. Suddenly a fist flies sharply right into the face of this grinning friend, he does not have time to orient himself. This is the evil Song Chao performing his sharp strike with the speed of lightning. He loudly and effectively rolls the guy into the floor. Saliva and blood are flying off of him, a bruise is already visible, and it looks like several teeth have been knocked out. Song Wenxiu and Xiu Xiu are stunned, they cannot believe this. Immediately, Sun Chao is attacked by the rest of his evil friends who are nearby in the room. The guy looks in their direction and realizes that they are all so slow for him. Do they really want to mock him like that? Song Chao crouches slightly and punches his bald friend directly in the body, he coughs up blood, that friend is completely open, what was he even hoping for? Song Chao concludes that this is the effect of the drug. All the friends are ready, they are lying on the floor, there is only one left, Song Wenxiu, who is sitting on the sofa in the back. Song Chao furiously asks what this guy was saying about him. Didn't he quite hear? City Road, a good day that is coming to an end. Sister and brother stand outside the heaven and earth karaoke room. The sister stands there stunned, what just happened? Xu Xu asks his comrade, when did he become so capable of fighting? He was able to kill six or seven people in one fell swoop. Did he drop out of school and work to learn this? The guy remembers this whole mess again, he notices something. Now he has a headache, Xiu Xiu pulled out the recorder during the fight, and he almost thought that she was in cahoots with them, by the way, why does she even need a voice recorder? Because girls have to somehow protect themselves, if she was afraid of danger, she should have disagreed with him from the very beginning. Sister Xiu Xiu is amazed, is he going to play badger now? That is, blackmail her. She tries to get out of it somehow and tells her brother that there was no such plan at all, the guy says not to turn away and look at him when she answers him. She admits that in fact this time, the girl promised him to come in order to agree to be with him. Song Chao can't believe what he just heard. The fact is that their family has long been unable to pay off its debts, and she is also already an adult, the sister looks good, because this is an advantageous position. And then he, brother, will not have to run and fuss so much he will be able to return to the university and continue his studies. Song Chao grasps it now, so if this guy shows up again, he will become his son-in-law. The brother admits that this is a legendary failure. The sister is worried, they won't take revenge on them now. And he holds his voice recorder in his hand. Sun Chao sharply replies that this is some kind of insurance. The sister runs away from the karaoke room after her brother, what should they do then? 
The brother says to go with him, he has something to tell her. If you want to avoid retribution, then you need to have enough strength and money with you, her brother's fists are quite hard now. He reports that he has found a good part-time job that brings him a lot of money. Shu Shu can't believe his eyes, does he really have his own car? Sun promises her that very soon he will lead their family to a better life. Without relying on other strangers, they will do everything possible to escape from the sea of suffering. Without worrying about money, and without fear of bullying from someone, he was happy that he could actually do it. Song Chao's home, sunny day. He collected his thoughts and decided to get started. Xiu Xiu clarifies, does it really not hurt? The brother tries to inject a strengthening drug into her arm, he says it doesn't hurt at all. Xiu Xiu is very afraid and doubtful, she should know that this is a medicine to boost immunity. She wants to know if he's already used it on their dad. The older brother confirms. Is this some kind of new immune, stimulating drug? Sun replies that it is. My sister wants to know if their company is some kind of pharmaceutical company. They could be guinea pigs for something like this and benefit, but what if something goes wrong? This is truly a clinical trial, don't worry about this, my brother brought the latest medicine that he tried himself, there are no problems with it. It was unexpected and my sister immediately shuddered all over. Has he already used it on himself? Song Chao confirms that this is quite advanced technology. He slams the first aid kit shut, the fact is that there are still not many people willing to test this drug, and production volume cannot increase, and there is not enough data to enter the market. He and the boss of this company can be considered good friends, she is a reliable person. He was able to get not only a big salary, but also a car. At first he had some doubts and considered refusing, Xiu listens to him. The boss offered him too much, his sister sympathizes with him. She advises her brother to be a little more careful anyway, Song Chao jokes, who made their family poor. Song Chao receives a message on his phone, his younger sister asks who is it. The brother replies that he is a classmate, is it really Miao Qing? On the screen there is a greeting and an invitation to an alumni meeting to get everyone together for lunch, let the one who comes sign up. This is an old classmate, but he has a bad character, the same message comes from him in another place. The girl looks and is indignant, who could be free for this now, in such a tense time. Then something immediately comes to her mind. She slowly takes off her glasses and continues to think. Maybe she should look, and there will be a person who can help her in one current situation. The next day, Song Chao arrives in his car. He still came here. He remembers receiving a message on his phone. The younger sister likes this idea, she says to go ahead there, but Song Chao thinks about it. It's better to just forget about it, the sister stands in bewilderment. Now the most important thing is work, and they don't have time for various social games. He notices that his sister is simply superficial. But his sister reports that many of his classmates are medical workers. And he is currently working at a pharmaceutical company, isn't this a good opportunity to network and expand your contacts? This is difficult for Song Chao, he thinks about it, he can't explain to his sister that this drug is from the future. But the brother still agrees to go for it, so be it. Overall, this is a reasonable approach. It will be seen, perhaps it will be possible to find distribution channels. And if he still doesn't, then he'll just eat and go back to his home. A well-groomed girl sits in a car. Just recognized someone. Miss Meng asks her driver if something happened to her. The girl replies that everything is fine. She gets out of the car in high heels. When Miss Meng is free, she will call the driver, he agrees to wait for her. The girl looks around carefully. Meanwhile, Song Chao rises in the elevator, pensive. They both look very attractive, the only hope is that it won't be a waste of time. A spacious, luxurious establishment, with everything inside neatly arranged and sparkling. A hospitable man with gold front teeth warmly invites you to a meeting. The guy cannot believe that he sees his former classmate Sun Chao in front of him. He makes fun of him as usual about Song Chao still looking bad. Song replies that Miao Qing is still the same as before, they get to know each other. Someone from behind also recognizes him and calls out to him, they all really haven't seen each other for so long. His former classmate hugs him by the neck and says that if he doesn't attend parties, he will have to drink three fine glasses, but Song Chao is driving today, so he passes. Miao Qing calls him a poor bastard, what else can you expect from him? Suddenly his eyes sparkled, what does he see in front of him? He got all excited. 
Meng Yuezhu herself came, they had not seen each other for a long time and greeted each other, how interesting. Meng asks if Song Chao just passed through this. Miao confirms, because he is from a poor family, and he pretends to be someone he doesn't understand. Meng Yuezhu replies that it is not good to talk behind one's back, but Miao Qing doesn't care much about this. Miao Qing listens and agrees to be more careful next time. A classically dressed former classmate, Xiao Xin, approaches them, friends get to know each other. Xiao Xin takes her hand and wants to lead her out, everyone missed her very much, Yuezhu apologizes, she was just busy. Miao Qing is delighted with the appearance of Meng Yuezhu, now the meeting should definitely be a success. Meng is the daughter of the chairman of a large company, she is very beautiful, erudite and has high moral qualities, Yuezhu is the leader of a large company in the second generation. Miao Qing decides to follow this lady at the party today, it's interesting, he's been attracted to her for a long time. She drinks a glass of wine. Meng Yuezhu asks his friend if she knows how Song Chao is doing. She replies that it looks like he had to give up his studies. Xiaoxin mockingly jokes, has the princess decided to take an interest in the poor boy? This is impossible. But Meng Yuezhu is still puzzled by something. It turns out somehow strange, she saw the car that Song arrived in, and it is quite high-end. But it doesn't matter anyway, it has nothing to do with her, she wants to find out if there are any suitable talents here. Meng Yuezhu wants to find those who have experience in large-scale biological research projects, Xiaoxin advises her to find someone who is interested in science. Several guys from the meeting respond that they don't have the opportunity to do scientific research right now. Another girl says that later, when she returns, she might ask her professor about this. Main talked to a lot of people, but unfortunately she couldn't find what she was looking for. She is sad about this, it turns out that she came here in vain, but this was her main reason for coming here. But does she really want that much? Why is this so difficult, because there are a lot of different people gathered here. No one has yet reached the senior year and has not written any papers, not to mention participating in scientific projects. It was too naive to think that there would be a person here who could help solve their difficulties. She decides now to just eat and go back to her place, suddenly in the hall someone calls Chow for a drink. Chow Song does not accept the offer, explaining that he is driving today, but Miao Qing continues to insist that nothing bad will happen. He happily notices Meng Yuezhu looking in their direction. Miao comes up with a plan of action, although Chao is poor, he holds a good position in the class, what will happen if he defeats Chao? Then Yuezhu will be able to appreciate his handsome side. Miao Qing raises his glass of alcohol high and continues to insist, Chao answers why Miao doesn't want to hear what he has to say. Another classmate hugs Chao and also encourages him to drink, everything will be fine, he will take Chao back since he himself is allergic to alcohol. Song Chao swears, everyone pesters him and gives him no rest, why would he do this? He still gives his consent, so be it, since he came to the meeting, he will take part in the dispute. They can start, all classmates stand nearby and watch the argument. Miao's cunning plan is that he drank an anti-intoxication drug in advance, he himself will be fine, but Chao will become a laughing stock. They start to compete. Let Chao do this to him. To make Miao look great, they drink a lot without stopping, and the argument gets serious. But it all ends with Miao burping at the end of the hall, he could not do anything and win with dignity, others admire Song Chao. A classmate admits that this is the first time he can see how Sun can drink so much at once, Chao replies that there is nothing special about it. He notices that in fact he is not even the least bit drunk, surely this is also the merit of his drug. Miao Qing is all red and very drunk at this meeting, he thinks this is all unfair. It's just not fair, the guy is completely beside himself with rage, things don't go the way he wanted. He gets angry and points his finger at Sun Chao in front of everyone, why can he be so popular, but no one likes him. Song Chao really doesn't quite understand what this is all about, it looks like Miao Qing has some personal problems of his own. He doesn't think he offended Miao Qing. He continues and mistakes his conversation for an arrogant attitude. Other classmates take him aside to calm him down, Miao shouts that he is poor, so he must bow to him. He is advised to go for a walk somewhere for now, there is no point in continuing to participate in this. Meng Yuezhu sees this whole picture from afar, she's confused, what's happening? What are these guys doing, they and their girlfriend don't understand? Xiaoxin asks if Meng has found any candidates, but, unfortunately, 
no one here has any experience with projects, and they can't help, Xiaoxin encourages them that they still have time before graduation. Yue Zhu admits that he is a little desperate right now, the situation is really difficult. Suddenly she gets a call on her phone, she's distracted, she needs to answer, who could it be? This is her dad, she warned that she would go to the graduation party tonight, did anything happen? Yue Zhu apologizes and steps aside to talk, looks like a conversation is brewing. What's the matter, why is he calling her at such a time? She's at a meeting, it's not entirely convenient to talk. Dad tells her to find some quiet place to talk, the situation is urgent. He has something to tell her, he waits until the girl moves away and is completely attentive. She's ready to talk. Why can't we discuss this a little later, after her meeting? Yuezhu's father tells him to calm down and just listen to him, she's all attention. The point is that the company decided to shut down the research project that Meng is responsible for. This decision was made by the board of directors, it is necessary to close her research project. Meng Yuezhu looks at the phone in horror and cannot believe it, this news stunned her. The girl takes a deep breath, she needs to first recover from what she heard. Then exhale, now we can continue this conversation, the girl is ready for discussion. She wants to know what happened at the company. Dad answers only what she heard, nothing more, he only told her what he had to. Funding is in jeopardy and they can no longer invest money, research has still not brought any results, so many have complaints. He can no longer ignore the opinions of the rest of the board of directors. As far as Yuezhu is aware, based on analysis, their corporation only has a way out in research and development. Currently, none of their products have competitive advantages, they will be able to leave second and third tier cities in the future only by investing huge amounts of money, if they don't fight this time, then they will never have a chance again. She understands everything her dad is talking about, what does he mean by all this? The point is that this time they will have to compromise, difficulties make themselves felt and have their impact. Their situation is such that they can no longer continue to invest in the funds. Before any ideas can be talked about, they must fill the stomachs of those walking next to them. Meng Yuezhu asks for his forgiveness. She tearfully asks her father to give her three more months, she can't just leave it like that. Let him help her hold out for another three months, and then within a month she will be able to provide the board of directors with a report on the experiment with gene repair. But Dad replies that he understands, he agrees, but the situation has become truly critical. She goes out and promises herself to do everything in her power, there is no way to delay with all this. Meng Yuezhu looks dejected, after such a conversation, there can be no other way. She leaves the toilet room, the girl returns back to the alumni meeting. There is a man nearby in the men's department, who could it be? And what is he doing there? This is Song Chao, and it seems he heard something he shouldn't have, he stands in thought. We are talking about genetic medicine, the project is serious, this could be dealt with. The guy is in the men's room, he heard a conversation about some research. But Meng Yuezhu's family works in the medical industry, this could be a good opportunity. It looks like she has some problems with this project that need to be resolved as soon as possible. Song Chao thinks about it, can he somehow help her with this with his capabilities? You'll have to try this anyway, this is unlikely to make things worse, but the proposal is good. He heads into the hall and hears some requests, it looks like some kind of indistinct commotion. Was he interested in what was going on there? The guy looks into the hall to find out what is happening at the meeting. It is Miao Qing who still cannot calm down, he insists that Meng Yuezhu drink with him. But she is against it, she will need to return very soon, let him offer it to someone else. Qing says that he doesn't want to hear all this nonsense, he abruptly hands her a glass of wine. She was not in the mood for drinking alcohol. Does she, miss, despise his wine? Where did this disrespect come from? He continues to insist on his own and does not want to stop. Meng Yuezhu is perplexed by all this absurdity that is happening, how does this apply to her? Xiaoxin loudly starts shouting at him to show him some respect, drunk. Another former classmate of his also tells Miao to just shut up. Meng Yuezhu is running out of patience, she just doesn't want to waste her time on this drunkard anymore, Miao Qin keeps yelling for everyone to just get out of his way, he wants Meng to drink his wine. Yuezhu begins to tremble, she's had enough, what kind of screams and requests it is not known why. Suddenly a man's hand grabs her shoulder from behind, who else could it be? And what does he intend to do? He calls her head girl, and turns Meng Yuezhu's gaze to himself, whose hand is this? 
Song Chao stands in front of her, he heard that the girl is interested in genetic drugs, so could she do him the honor? Song Chao immediately wants to discuss this matter, can't they talk about this? When, if not now? And it seems that she is just free now, Song Chao reiterates that he would like to talk to her, he has something interesting to say, he's standing right next to her in the meeting room, there are other classmates behind, Main looks around, something happened. Her mouth is slightly open, Huizhou looks luxurious. This is about researching their company, Song hopes to discuss this with Chief Meng Yuezhu. Meng doesn't quite understand what he's talking about, but he gives Sun Chao his consent. She tells Xiao Xin that she will go to talk to Song Chao about one matter, and she can continue for now. Her friend remains perplexed, she wants to stop Meng, how can you just suddenly run away in the middle of a meeting? But she replies that she will call her back, waves goodbye and simply leaves. Xiao Xin remains with his hand outstretched, she wanted to say something else, but Main couldn't hear her anymore. Yue Zhu left them all, there is still turmoil between classmates. Miao Qin is angry, he sees everything and curses after them, damn it, it didn't work out for him. Qin calls Sun the son of a dog and a bastard, he did it anyway, he took Meng away. He tries to break free from the holding hands of his former classmates and continues to look after them. Miao Qing accuses Song of taking this opportunity to show off in front of Meng, he doesn't intend to let them go anywhere. A little later, in the underground parking lot, several cars are parked next to each other. Song Chao and Meng Yuezhu are coming, they were finally able to move away from this meeting. The girl speaks first and thanks, she smiles and is friendly towards Sun Chao. He came to help her, didn't he? Now he can return to have fun further at the event, and she will go. But that was not the case, Sun Chao really needed to talk to the headman, he actually has a business proposition for her. She doesn't understand what's happening around her. The fact is that he is currently working in a friend's company, they are conducting research in the field of genetic medicine, they already have samples in stock, he apologizes, he heard everything, since he accidentally overheard her call. So he wants to know if her company is interested in seeing samples and collaborating? The headman stands trembling, what is he saying? Song Chao really helped her and Meng is grateful to him for that, and she won't even persecute him for eavesdropping on their company's trade secrets. But, could he not look down on other people's work so much? Yue Zhu looks at him with pretension. The headman really expresses his gratitude to Sun Chao for the help he provided, but maybe he shouldn't look down on research so much. Does he really understand what he's talking about? They stand opposite each other at a distance, Meng Yuezhu crossed her arms over her chest questioningly. Song Chao doesn't understand what's wrong. He just wants to help, what's the problem here? How can she think that way, he didn't mean it at all. Does Sun even understand what research is? This means that tens of millions or even billions are needed for leading laboratories. The world's best scientific researchers then form a team, they spend days and nights working on developments and experiments. Each year, investments in experiments can amount to hundreds of millions. And it is not necessary that this will lead to the desired results, everyone needs to work carefully. And now he tells her that a private laboratory has its own product and wants to talk about cooperation. Headman Meng Yuezhu glares at him, how could he think of such a thing? There must be a limit to arrogance. What help can there be from him? Meng sighs and doesn't want to hear anything more about this, she's had enough. The headman comes to her senses and apologizes, it was rude, she lost control. She was tense and didn't finish her sentence. She thanks him for the offer and will contact him if the need arises. Song Chao tries to stop her, she simply misunderstood him and made a hasty decision. But the headman gets into the car, she needs to move on with her affairs, which are not waiting for her. She orders her driver to drive, he obeys, that's enough from the headman for today. The squeal of tires filled the parking lot as the car drove away abruptly. Sun tries to have time to say something after him, but to no avail, no one can hear him anymore. She just picked it up and left, why did she explode so abruptly, did he tell her something wrong? She said she would contact him, but didn't even leave her phone number or business card, what a trick. The headman clearly doesn't trust him, she didn't even let him say a word after his proposal. Meng Yuezhu rides in the car and looks away to the side, but the problem is that the real product is already in his hands. The next day, well-maintained area of residential buildings, beautiful sunny day in the city. 
he never would have thought that they would come to him for such things, doesn't this show that Boss Zhou has many different paths? He chuckles as Song Chao walks behind him, they are in the corridor of some room. Brother Song speaks well, Zhou turns on the light. But don't let Sun worry about it since they are friends, Zhou has the power to do everything right. Surely he should help him too. They are inside a store with many products on the shelves, Song Chao is delighted. The shelves are in perfect order with goods, everything is fresh and clean, everything in the room is sparkling clean. There are a lot of products and a wide variety, they are all neatly stacked on their respective shelves. It's all an old supermarket, with reasonably priced items, a large area and lots of other things to use. It itself is close to the county and rural areas, and there are other shopping channels nearby. Does he meet Song Chao's requirements? The younger brother is just happy looking at this place. If brother thinks there is no problem, then Zhou can take it on for half a million. There is no need to worry about the previous channels, Zhou will provide them for Song Chao. The younger brother falls in love with this place, in fact, it's quite cheap for something like this. The boss chuckles, he still wants to trade with him, why would he cheat? But Zhou also asks his brother to take care of him, he buys and sells gold and all that, Song Chao agrees without any problem. Then Zhou will receive the contract, without hesitation or consent, everything will be done quickly and well. He looks back at Sun, because it doesn't look like this little brother is doing anything strange. Zhou was plunged into deep thought. He wonders where the hell this guy got his gold. Still the same question. House of Song Chao, there is a conversation about a supermarket, his dad and sister are sitting in thought. Song Chao in front of them talks about his intention to buy a supermarket, he asks his dad to help him and take control, his girlfriend is quite rich, and now he is helping her, she provided son with startup capital. He can't help in any way other than running the business itself and then buying good meat and vegetables for them, the father agrees. He thinks that he will still be able to serve for several years if he leaves the mine. Dad agrees to look after the store instead of his son, this kind of work suits him. It is done, now dad won't have to work so hard and he will have the opportunity to buy a lot of different food and supplies. Now it was time for Song Chao to go back after he had done a good job of organizing things here in his hometown. Song Chao drives his white SUV to the supermarket that afternoon. Inside, the father carefully wipes the dust from the boxes on the shelves, everything is in perfect order. He can handle this kind of work, dad takes a short break and looks up. Sister Suna Chao opens the front door with her right foot, a sound is heard, she comes out. My sister carries out a large box of vegetables from the supermarket, she looks puzzled. She shouts to her brother that the potatoes and cabbage he asked for are ready and can be taken away. Son thanks and says to just put it on the ground for now, meanwhile, he puts things in the trunk of his SUV. His sister asks him again if it is possible to send such things to the boss. Song Chao says not to worry about it, they don't have anything good, but the food is fresh. By the way, Song Chao is smiling and wants to know something. Does she feel tired now, carrying such a heavy box? She must have excellent physical fitness, my sister doesn't quite understand. It really doesn't feel heavy at all, even though it holds a lot of food. She throws the heavy box of vegetables down, a loud sound is heard, it's strange, but over the past two days it seems that I have become much stronger. Song Chao also notices that their dad's complexion has improved significantly and it is clear to the naked eye that his body is recovering. The effect of these drugs is terrifying, well, after all, this is a standard essential item for people from that doomsday world. Sister and dad are standing next to Sun Chao's new high-quality car and admiring it. Dad notices that his son is in good company if he can afford to have such a good car, the guy says that these are all the advantages of the company. Dad instructs him to work hard and not let him down since his friend treats him so well, he asks if Song Chao heard. The son agrees, he is already an adult and is quite ready to conduct serious business on his own. Son tells his dad that he doesn't have to worry, the guy has known this for a long time. Son drives far enough away from the supermarket that he won't be seen, he is waiting for the right moment. He thinks that now, by turning the ring, the guy could again return to the world of doomsday. If you think about it, in fact, he was already able to earn enough money. Why then would he return to this post-apocalypse again and fight for his life? He begins to doubt, surely nothing terrible will happen if he just decides to stay at home. The driver just sits in the car, looks ahead and thinks in silence for a moment. 
Song Chao then laughs harshly, what the hell is this, he hates people like this the most. He has no desire to become a bastard who will run off somewhere with money, and so he decides to return, he turns the ring and goes to Xinjiang to the meeting. The time funnel was able to transport him directly by car to the world of doomsday on the road. At this moment, the wheels have already lost traction and the car takes off. On the night road there is only a smoke trail from the car, as if it never existed. A huge time vortex transports a new SUV into the structure of a city from the future. Before this, bright sparks appear in the structure and a loud crash is heard that same night. A white car lands with a loud sound, it seems that Song Chao was able to get there, but where? After this, the car continues to drive further by inertia with a loud sound, the driver now needs to stop somehow. Song Chao tries to stabilize the control, he turns the black steering wheel of the car. The car makes several sharp turns on the road with markings, black traces of it are visible. The guy presses the brake as hard as he can, this all needs to stop quickly. He managed to stop the SUV, Song Chao gasps, his head on the steering wheel of the car. It's really luck, he didn't really expect to be able to move the whole car here. Although this turned out to be much more difficult than he initially expected. But moving the car with you is very useful, Song Chao is still happy about this. The guy opens the trunk of the SUV and does something there, you can actually bring and pick up more things this way, it seems like someone is watching him from behind. This is a monster with a long tongue and bright red eyes crawling along the ceiling. The driver does not have time to suspect that something is wrong, he decides to put on his equipment first and then go to Xinjiang and other acquaintances. After all, after all, it is not safe here. He doesn't want to wait for some monster to jump out at him here at night, suddenly a drop falls on the equipment from above. Song Chao immediately realizes that this must be an ambush, now we need to act quickly and decisively. The guy who just arrived suddenly pulls out his super effective blaster. The big scary monster opened its mouth wide and attacks Sun Chao directly. The guy looks around and notices him above him, his blaster at the ready, in his right hand. There is a spacious room around and no one else is visible who could provide help. Song Chao falls on his back and fires his blaster straight at the furious and evil monster above him. It hits the target and a disgusting sound is heard, the guy is ready, hiding behind the car. The bloody monster falls to the floor in front of Song Chao, it looks like it has stopped moving now. Song Chao watches carefully, was he able to kill him? It gets really hot here tonight. He praises himself that he was able to kill right away with one, suddenly a loud sound is heard from behind the guy. Sun hides in fear again, what was that? He was taken by surprise, looks like someone just shot. Is there really some kind of monster on top again? The guy continues to look in surprise, he is very excited. The hunter's well-equipped foot steps onto the floor, he calls out to him and seems to recognize him. The hunter holds the weapon in front of him that he has just fired, he wonders if Song Chao is okay. It's a bad idea to wander around here at a time like this, a well-equipped hunter stands on the roof and looks at the Chao. Song Chao is surprised, who could it be? Excitement and interest still do not leave him. The warrior seems to recognize Sun Chao and names him as the head of their supply department. What is he doing here anyway? Having overcome such difficulties, they were surprised at where they ended up. The hunter suggests leaving everything else with the car and going light. Too much supplies will affect their movement speed, they have to walk for about 30 minutes, there are many groups to go around, and the slower, the more dangerous. Song Chao is wearing his armor and has a large load of things on his back, he's ready to move out. They'll have to leave his new SUV here, right in the middle of the road for now. Song Chao wonders if there will be any problems with him during their absence. The hunter explains that mutants are usually of little interest in things. He will take Sun to their boss first, and then he will organize people to take the car, the guy agrees. He hopes that nothing will happen to the car and food while they are gone. The hunter adds that this is the first time he has seen an SUV without modifications to weapons and armor. He mentions that Song Chao brought a lot of good things with him, he really deserves to be appreciated by the boss. Song Chao responds, is he all about him? He smirks slightly, head of the procurement department, a well-invented title. The hunter says that Sun managed to return to them just in time, in two days they are going to move from here. The guy is puzzled and looks questioningly, did something happen in such a short time? The hunter is not aware of all the details, but according to their boss, 
it looks like the so-called monstrous wave is coming soon. By that time, hundreds of evil mutants of various types will gather and fill this entire area. And this time there will be not only ordinary mutant zombies, but also many other high-level monsters. And among them there may even be such a large creature as the ghoul. It is truly enormous in size and it is better to stay away from it, few people can cope with it. Song Chao with a smile asks to wait for him and not leave him, it's getting hot here. Is the hunter going to leave him here alone? The hunter could not imagine that Song Chao would leave such a place in an unprepared car. He was just clearing the area around and then came across him, so there is no need to pay attention to the little things. Sun Chao doesn't care much about this at all, they both walk side by side along the road, the main thing is to do everything quickly. The guys were finally able to get to the right place, Hunter Eugene points his finger at someone. Song Chao was tired of walking and from all the sudden rush of impressions, what else did he need to see? A spark lit up in his eyes, what will happen to him again? How soon will he meet his sisters? The girl sent Eugene patrolled, and he also returned with such a gift. Beautiful Shen sits in front of them Jiawen, she greets him after several days of separation. Welcome back, Song Chao, she smiles and looks at him friendly that night. 